have you always been a winner? Yes. At everything? Yes, I always win. Always. always? Like even when you always. were a little kid. On today's part in my take, Billy Mitchell in studio, probably the greatest heel of all time. Uh, if you haven't seen King of Kongs, go watch it. One of the greatest documentaries of all time. Billy Mitchell in studio plus the Mount Rushmore of arcade games with Billy Mitchell. We're going to talk a little 4th of July, a little NBA, What's who's getting traded where, Kevin Durant still out there blowing in the wind, hot seat, cool throne, and guys on chicks. And we are brought to you by our friends at Visible. Visible. What would you do with extra money you'd save from switching to Visible? Well, you could pay $60 with some carriers, but with Visible, it's as low as $25 a month. Think about what you could do with that extra cash. Visible is perfect for singles with the extra money you could take someone on a date or maybe just live your single life and buy yourself dinner. Uh, speaking of singles, I think we've had, oh no, PFT, what is the single best part of summer for you? It's been the beach, big cat. Oh man, there it is again. The beach keeps winning. The beach keeps winning. I just winning. came from the beach. Yeah. yeah. Just like Visible keeps winning, so switch to Visible at Visible.com slash pod. Get unlimited single line wireless for as low as $25 a month. Comparison to a single line with unlimited data or other major carriers. Uh, for plan and network details, see Visible.com slash pod. That's Visible.com slash pod. Check it out today. Thank you to Visible, our presenting sponsor. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Pardon My Take, presented by Visible. Go to visible.com slash pod. Get unlimited line wireless for as low as $25 a month. Today is Wednesday, July 6th, and Joey Chestnut is the greatest American that has ever lived. One of the greatest athletes of all time. And I think we can confidently say that he is the greatest eater, the greatest human eater of all time, right? There's no chance that anybody's ever been better than him. It's like with Usain Bolt, you can definitively say you, no one's ever been a faster sprinter than Usain Bolt. I think you can say the same thing about Joey Chestnut. No one in the history of mankind, going back thousands and thousands of years, has been able to hold a candle to what he does. He is the greatest athlete of all time, in my opinion. I know that some people would say Secretariat, Mike Francesa. I'm saying Joey Chestnut. And I know people will be like, well, that's not an athletic, you know, sport eating hot dogs really fast. Well, then go ahead. You try. You try to do what Joey Chestnut does. No one else can do it. He won his 15th in a row. Or no, what was it? 15th all time? 16th all time? 15th in 16 years, I believe. And the he only lost year in 2015 to Matt Stone. Because, yeah, the only reason he lost was because his fiance broke up with him a week before. So, yes, he is human. He bleeds like all of us. He can a broken heart can bring down Joey Chestnut, but what he did on July fourth on one leg, which I mean, Big Ben was probably watching him being like, "God damn it, I should get into competitive eating," and one leg and choked out a protester while eating hot dogs while winning the championship. I tip my cap to him. I don't think we'll, I, like I honestly, this is going to sound a little bit hyperbolic. I am lucky to be breathing the same air as Joey Chestnut. I'm lucky to be alive. Think about how many years, think about when you could have been born in the history of the of, of humanity. And we were born at the same time as Joey Chestnut. We got to enjoy Joey Chestnut. That's what he's done. And James you shared the stage with him too. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible, him, yeah. like what we've been lucky enough to see in our lifetimes. Uh, I was looking up some of his other records that he has. He's got some other records that like approach goat status if you just throw out if you got rid of this is like when you take out like Barry Bond steroid seasons mm -hmm. and throw them out and you look at the rest of his career and you're like oh he'd still be like a top three hitter of all time if you throw out the hot dog eating contest this guy still he ate 41 hard boiled eggs in eight minutes he ate <laughs> cool 23 he ate Shout 23 out cool great movie yeah 23 six inch Philly cheesesteak sandwiches in 10 minutes 390 shrimp wontons in eight minutes 28 pounds of smokes poutine in 10 minutes. It, there's no there's no number two. There's it's, no it's, number two. It's Joey Chestnut, Junior Soprano, and then the rest. Yes. Yeah. And Joey Chestnut, by the way, the one year that he loses, he comes back and he wins. That was the year I I was I, I competed and he said the, the buns were looking extra fast that day, which I was like, wow, I didn't even know that was a thing. But he's beating everyone by so much, and he doesn't like – you realize that he could eat 
I, I I can't remember what the second place person had. What is it like forty five or something? Forty like he could eat yeah twenty less hot dogs and still win every year. Yet he keeps pushing himself. Last year he had seventy six the the new record. He keeps just like find me a guy who will compete against himself like Joey Chestnut does. And again, if it wasn't for his fiance breaking up with him, we'd be talking about is has Joey Chestnut ruined the hot dog eating competition because he's won sixteen in a row. Is he is he bad for hot dogs? Yeah, he's the he's uh, UConn women's basketball of hot dogs. Jake knows all about eating when the buns get fast. Am I right? Am I right, Jake? Absolutely. He's also uh, he's won by an average of eighteen hot dogs per contest, so it's not Stupid. even close. Stupid. He is he is competing against himself. It's like when Tiger was dominating the PGA Tour. He could just take it easy, but he demands excellence out of himself. Yes. We're, we're we're definitely not going to get a live tour for major league eating, though. At least not in the hot dog category. Mm, you ne- never say, say never. Never say never. Um, all right. So I, I just, we had to lead with Joey Chestnut. Should we talk about a fake sport now? The NBA off season, this league. Oh man. Uh, so when we last recorded, we're on vacation this week. When we last recorded, Kevin Durant had just asked for a trade from the nets. We now are sitting here, uh, five days later. He has not been traded from the nets yet. I actually am of the belief that the nets should just be like, fuck it. You're staying on the team. You signed a four year deal. Like, that used to mean something kind of push back player empowerment. Like, Hey, no, you can't be traded. We're going to keep you. Uh, but he also has demanded that he wants to play with at least two all-star players. So he, he, I don't want to bring out the triple B, but he wants to play with at least two all-star players. I went through it. There's nine teams that are off the list off of that nine teams. They're off the list from the two all-star threshold, but there's a lot of teams that would be very funny if he got traded to that I'm hoping for. I mean, do you want to just go down? Like, what what would be the fun? The funniest is clearly the Warriors. If he gets traded to the Warriors, like, will that work? We don't know, but it would be fun to watch, <laughs> right? Yeah. Wait, we're talking <laughs> about we're talking about KD right now, right? KD, Not Kyrie. KD to, yeah, KD, yeah KD, KD to the Warriors is actually something that, like, I've if you if you're reading any of the stuff, I guess the Warriors had a meeting, and like the players were like, yeah, I, we'd take kevin durant on our team like give it a in shot the hamptons Did they have a hamptons ball. meeting again yeah that's <laughs> yeah. that's the problem it's like you got a lot of all-stars on the team a lot of ball dominant like some great shooters i don't know how kevin durant fits into that yeah can he so, can kevin durant check his ego enough to be successful on the golden state warriors but how great would it be kevin durant to the warriors Kyrie to the lakers and then the, and then lebron and Kyrie play kevin durant and the warriors in the western conference final for like four years in a row just be so, you know, like, if it's not broke, just don't fix it. Like, let's just go back I, to, to five years ago. I, what I'm rooting for, um, it, I mean, first of all, we should give credit to Brian Windhorst for calling his shot so perfectly Greatest. in advance. What are the Utah Jazz doing? Everybody around the league is asking, what's going on in Utah? I was I was on the edge of my seat all morning trying to figure out what the fuck was going on in Utah, and Windhorst was right. They trade away Rudy Gobert. He saw it coming. And the funny thing is, like, when he was giving that whole monologue, he was, like, dripping out breadcrumbs for everybody. He had everyone just, like, waiting for him to finally make a fucking point, and he just wouldn't do it. He knew that he was going to be right eventually. He was like, I know this is ridiculous in the moment, but in three hours when I'm not on TV anymore, everyone's going to be standing up and applauding for me. And I did. I gave him a a standing ovation. Oh, yeah. His flow was incredible. He was had everyone just waiting, like, what's next? What's next? And it's so funny because the entire Brian Windhorst, like, monologue that got memed to to death in record time, it was pretty much like 24 hours and the memes were dead. He could have just saved all that breath and just been like, hey, just remember, Danny Ainge is running the jazz now. So he's just going to get the max amount of picks in the future. And he's just going to do this all again. Which he did. I think the, I think the Wolves, like including, you know, their pick this year for Walker Kessler, I think they gave up like six or seven first round picks. So it's essentially yeah. like the Jazz are just and they're going to probably do the same thing with Donovan Mitchell. And it's just going to be the Jazz in like eight to 10 years are going to be a problem. I'm calling it right now. Problem. Yeah. The way that he strung it out, though, was so perfect. It was, it was He, like, built up all this fucking tension, and he was like, watch what's going on in Utah. He was yeah. like the Alex Jones of the NBA. I loved it, it. Yes. So, all right. So, KD, back to KD and his demand, which is, you know, he wants to play with two all-star players, all-star type players. Funniest places. Warriors would be the funniest. Thunder would also be funny, but they don't meet the two all-star threshold. I was looking it up. Um, it would be very funny if he got traded to uh, the Hornets who have two all-stars in Gordon Hayward and LaMelo Ball. 
It'd be very funny mm-hmm. if he got traded to the Knicks with Julius Randle and Derrick Rose, two all-stars. The Wizards have Bradley Beal and Porzingis. That's two all-stars. Great team. Yeah, no, <laughs> dude, it's coming home dude, for him. Bring it. The, Bull, the Bulls have four. We, the Bulls have a super team. They have four all-stars. They have Vooch, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Andre Drummond. That's a that's a super team. I just I, also just I want, him going to Chicago. The takes would be flying about oh, Michael Jordan. It'd oh, be great. So good. I just so good. I want I want one team to get all the bad vibes, guys. I want the preferably the Lakers. I want yes. them to like go on. I want them to keep Russell. I know it's probably not possible, and with a salary cap, maybe there's some creative ways. Maybe Les Snead can give him a talking to and be like, "Hey, here's how you can cheat at the salary cap." But I want like Kyrie. I want Russell Westbrook on the same team. I want Chris Paul on the same. I want like the biggest shit show of a franchise possible just for the takes because they would probably end up winning a, a, a ton of games because they're all super talented. But then the inevitable implosion, like get James Harden on the team too. Yep. get everybody there. I just want one centralized location of just nonstop drama and bullshittery. I agree. It would be it, it just put it all in one spot and let us just watch the shit show every single time. Um, other teams that could get traded to on the two all-star threshold, the Nuggets. Jokic and, and they had just uh, signed DeAndre Jordan, so that's two all stars. Mm. I just want I want one of these teams like the Jazz have still have Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell. The Pelicans have Zion and Ingram. The Pelicans actually would be unbelievable if they traded for him. CJ CJ has never made an All Star game. So I I looked I I mm. went deep and I was looking up all the All Stars, but it would be like I like I even got to the point where I was like maybe he could get traded to the Pistons because the Pistons just bought out Kemba Walker. And Cade Cunningham will be an all-star eventually. Future but, all-star. Yeah, just like imagine him getting traded to the Hornets and the, and the Nets being like, well, you asked for two all-stars. So we get we we re, we gave you your request. He probably meant current all-stars, right? Yeah, I mean, of course. He wants to play for – he wants to win a championship. That's why he should go back to the Warriors, which would be the funniest thing that could happen in the NBA is Kevin Durant getting traded back to the Warriors. I don't even care if they won like three in a row, but just watching him – after Shaq did the whole, like, you got, you can't, there's bus drivers and bus passengers. If he just was a bus driver in, in Brooklyn for a year and a half and was like, actually, I, I kind of like just sitting like maybe second row of the bus. That's way more fun. It would be great if he went back to Golden State. That's why that, it, I am rooting for that because I, I've felt like in the last couple of years, KD has been inching closer and closer to like, he's just, he confronts, he views his arch nemesis now as like Stephen A. Smith. That's Correct. who he's competing against every day. Every day he goes to work to prove that Stephen A. Smith is corny and doesn't know what he's talking about and is a waste of breath. The best thing he could ever do would be to go back to Golden State, win two more championships, retire, and be like, I'm happy with what I did and how I won. And Stephen A. Smith, can I, I did that knowing that Stephen A. Smith was going to come to work every day, ready to just unload that little mustache on me. And I'm fine with it. I'm secure enough in myself to go back to the Warriors and do it all do it all again back here. Yes. Yes. And and it also the Nets, like the implosion of the Nets, I kind of I want them to keep both these guys just because I want to see it implode again because it's our, we've already gotten to watch it happen once now. Or actually twice because the James Harden thing. But the stat that's been thrown around, which is just insane to to think about, is that Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant played 44 regular season games together. 44. They went to Brooklyn together. They picked each other, and they played forty-four games together. I've you can tell that I've got uh, some free time, vacation week. So I I went down another rabbit hole with StatMuse, where you can search like player player A has played this many games with player B. I want to throw a couple out to you: people who have played more games together than Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, who again they signed together in Brooklyn to become a, like a super team, and they played 44 regular season games. I bet, just off the top of my head, I bet you Shaq has played more than 44 games with probably like 300 people. There, there are a lot of Shaqs. I, I, the, the most notable Shaq I, I had out there that I looked up, LeBron and Shaq played 53 games together. Mm-hmm. Like these are, these are pairings of, of all-stars that you just don't even think about. Steve Nash and Kobe played 48 games together. Scotty Pippen and Hakeem Olajuwon played 50 games together. These are all mm-hmm. more than Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Uh, Gary Payton and Kobe Bryant played 65 games together. Here's a weird one. Tony Parker and Kemba Walker, they played 56 games together on the Hornets. Remember when Tony Parker finished his career on the Hornets? Hank, mm-hmm. you'll like this one. John Wall and Paul Pierce. 
They played 71 games together. Oh, yeah. On the, yeah. On the Wiz. <laughs> on the 71 Wiz. games together. Patrick Ewing and Gary Payton played 76 games together on the Sonics. There's like so many. Horace Grant and Patrick Ewing played 62 games together on the Magic. There's all these weird combinations of guys who you never would think like Vince Carter and Hakeem Olajuwon. They played 47 games together on the Raptors. You never think that. They what? played more games together than Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, who will, willingly chose to play together. Rasheed Wallace and Allen Iverson played 48 games together when AI went to the Pistons. There's like, it's just, I could do this all day of, of, of random pairings of all-stars that played together that beat Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, mm-hmm. who put together a super team, and they played 44 regular season games together. What about Carl Malone? Carl Malone and and uh, Lamar Odom. I could I could search out. Carl Malone played. So Carl Malone got. I I was looking that up. I think he played like forty one games with Kobe and forty games with Shaq. Um, so it was close. I was trying to only do the ones that are that are more. Um, Chris Webber and Allen Iverson played ninety nine games together. Mello and AI played one hundred thirteen games together. That's like three careers of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. It's just. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy to think about when they when they signed there. And I know Kevin Durant was hurt the first year, but if you had said that when they brought that team together, like because that was the big second act for both of those guys and 44 yeah. games and that's all they got. Well, it's it's almost like super teams don't always work out. In the NFL, <laughs> they never work out. Yes. Like it, with the exception, I guess, we're proven of the last like two years. But Besides that, besides like the most recent two years, which is completely undermining my point, it usually doesn't work out that well in the NFL. But in basketball, it does. Well, uh, it, but it, but it's but it's way funnier in basketball when it doesn't work out. It, and it's also it's it, we're also seeing like the reverse side of these super teams, where it's not only the super team, but essentially the general manager and owner basically letting the players become the general manager and owner. Like, this is a situation where Kevin – I mean, you heard it when Kyrie Irving was like, me and Kevin are going to sit down and figure this out. In the in the, like, wait, what about the GM and the owner? And LeBron, I mean, they won a title, but Jeannie Buss is tweeting about how she misses Kobe Bryant at like 1 in the morning. So it's like, they're, you know, if you, let, if you let players just run everything, it can backfire. What do you think – where do you think this leaves Ben Simmons? Like, is he, is he just going to be the guy next year? Well, PFT, good point, because uh, what if Kevin Durant just gets traded back to the Nets? Because they have three all-stars, Blake Griffin, Kyrie Irving, and Ben Simmons. There you go. <laughs> so like, wh- why not? <laughs> ben Simmons definitely needs to be on the all-bad vibes team. But yes. I, I, I was curious. Like it's, It kind of sucks that we're not even going to get to see one game where it's Ben Simmons, Kyrie, and KD just to see what that would have looked like. Right, and and we are going to get. I agree. We we are going to maybe get the 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 trade that got floated out there, Russell Westbrook to the Nets, which I think Russell Westbrook, Jake can look it up. I think he's going to maybe go for like one of the greatest accomplishments of all time is signing a five year max and then playing playing it for a different team every single year, which would be incredible because I think <laughs> he's just like I don't understand. There's there's never been a person who's had a, a contract that is deemed untradeable that gets traded more than Russell Westbrook. I mean, he needs to he needs to play hardball. If you're Russell Westbrook at this point, just be like, send me to Tennessee, send me to Florida, or send me to uh, to Texas so that I can play. No, just give me all the money that he I was would on. Be paying yeah, it was in Houston. Tax. Yeah, but it, imagine he gets traded back to to he gets traded to the Nets for Kyrie, and then Kevin Durant's like they don't trade Kevin Durant, and we get Russ and Kevin Durant together again. Why not? Yeah. I'm rooting for chaos. I'm rooting for the exact same thing. I'm rooting for chaos and the stupidest, dumbest things to happen because, like, this is all of this league off seasons combined into one where it's like no big free agents are out there, but we can get some really dumb combinations of trades. You're forgetting about the Clippers, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna constantly remind everybody Problem. you're Problem. forgetting about the the Clippers. Guess who's back? That's right. They're gonna be good. Yeah. As long as Kawhi plays, which he might not. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, Kawhi's <laughs> back this year. Maybe. It's Kawhi, PG, <laughs> Playoff P, John Wall, Championship. Yeah, I think they still have one of one or two of the Mark Morris twins. I feel like they always have one of them, right? They cycle them in and out. <laughs> Pat Bev is probably going to make his way back there dude, at some point. Dude, how about Pat Patrick Beverly? We, you know, we defended the move of, of celebrating the Timberwolves like they had won the championship when they won the playing game because we went through the, the Minnesota sadness and it's really, really tragic to think of what's happened in that city. 
But it does make it so much funnier that Patrick Beverly is no longer on the Timberwolves after after winning that play in game. That is very mm-hmm. very funny. He brought he brought them a, a championship like a, that's a Minnesota championship. <laughs> yeah, they should honestly like I I hereby give full and and complete permission to Minnesota to put a banner up saying play in tournament champion. Yes, just be the Colts. Works for them. Uh, what were you gonna yeah. say, Jake? Yeah, so I'm looking for another person who's played five uh, teams in five years, but he would be that. 2019 Thunder, 2020 Rockets, 21 Wizards, right now Lakers, and next year if he goes somewhere else. Think, like, he he just keeps getting traded. Everyone Everyone's like, ooh, that contract, that's terrible. And then they just trade him. <laughs> it's great. I want it to happen. I want Kyrie to be back with LeBron, and I want Kevin Durant to be back with the Warriors. That's it's it. just gonna be hilarious. I want, to I see want KD. I want KD on the Thunder. Yeah, that would be funny too. Ultimate, ultimate redemption story. Yeah. To see, to see LeBron going back into Big Brother mode on Kyrie would be a real treat for everybody. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. James Speaking- Harden's on his third team in three years. Obviously, not the same, but yeah. So it actually, Kevin Durant, like the the rumors of where he's gonna go, like the Celtics and the Heat are two of the teams that could offer what what potentially would be like a good enough offer for the Nets. How I'll start with you, Jake. You want is he heat culture? Yeah, like I said last week, he keeps his head down in a literal form. But uh <laughs> I think I think the, the tweeting is not really something Pat Riley would stand for, but it's KD, so he'll back off. I don't okay. know. Okay. All right. Do you think maybe Pat Riley would would like pull up his his tweets and be like, Kevin, before we trade for you, I just want to go through this and just Maybe can you delete some of these? He should send his tweets to Pat Riley for approval. <laughs> I'm sure that will go over well. No, just yeah. have just have uh, Udonis Haslam hold his phone. Yeah, yeah. And if he's got a, a really a good, good tweet to put out, be like, "Yo, Udonis, here's what I'm going to say," and then let Haslam decide. Yes. Yeah, I yes. like that. Uh, and Hank, I mean you, you don't want to break up the Celtics, do you? I don't want to break up the Celtics. I do love KD though. He's, he's always been one of my favorite players. It would be like they would have to make a good trade, but I could definitely talk myself into it and be happy with it. But it's one of those things where it's just probably not necessary. Where we're mean, so close with the team is, as is. It is Kevin Durant, right? But it just depends what you have to give up, right? Do you he's, think he's that older. the Celtics would be worse with Kevin Durant? It depends. You never know. They're two games away from winning the championship. Like if they if they lost in the Eastern Conference Finals, then technically that would mean yes, right? But if the Celtics had Kevin Durant instead of Jalen Brown, I think they win the title. Yeah, I don't know, Big Cat. They they want Kevin Durant in the playoffs. That's true. How it's quickly true. we forget. That is true. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm gonna. Anything- I'm, gonna I'm, I'm just gonna say for the record, I'll take him on the Wizards if he wants to come I'll, home. I'll take. I'll him. take him on the Bulls. I'll take him on the Bulls. Um, absolutely. Like I said, four four All Stars, no big deal. The Andre Drummond, they, some some like Windhorse meme, were the Bulls signing Andre Drummond to further entice Kevin Durant? Just more All Stars for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's I think that's exactly what happened. Um, okay. Anything else in the sports world before we do hot seat, cool throne? It's I mean we're baseball season. We're we're heavy baseball season. We sure are. saw a triple play. That was cool. The White Sox got triple played. I think it was actually the yeah. first. I think I think Tim Kirchin might have ejaculated because it was the I think it was the first time there's been a triple play of that type that happened. Which uh, is crazy. Every day you can go to the ballpark and see something you've never seen before. That's the beauty of baseball. Oh, Neil Cruz hit a home run that I think is still climbing. I don't think it's I, started to reach its apex yet. I'm I'm all in on O'Neill Cruz. He's my like I want I want O'Neill Cruz to become the best player of all time and be like, yeah, remember when he was on my uh, cool throne at, like in in 2022, <laughs> and and that yeah. would be it. That would be my I'll, I'll just be like, yep, that's it. I I, I didn't was even able know- to see a prospect even though everyone knew about him. I was able to see him before everyone else because he's on the Pirates. And he I, happened to play I, the Cubs one night. W- when you started talking about him, I was like, "Wait, is that that guy that had that sweet ass whip motion throw across the across the infield?" And I was like, "That guy's an awesome shortstop, even though I'd never seen him before." Yeah, we've got a, you know what? We've got an eye for talent. When we it do. Comes to see, we're <laughs> seam heads on this we're show. Billy, we're basically Billy Bean. Like I saw him yeah. one game against the Cubs, and I was like, "This guy's a major league baseball player." 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was, oh, there's, there's realignment going on right now. Oh, so yeah. More realignment. More realignment. Pac 12 yeah. looks like it's going to get halfway absorbed into the Big 12. And they just need to get away. They need to do away with the numbers entirely at this point. Like, you're, no, you're not going to be the Big 12. You're not the Big 10 any longer. But mm-hmm. think of something else. Either change your numbers to, to uh, mean what they say or just get rid of them all together. Because now it's going to be like 18 teams maybe in the Big 12. And if you're going to do 18 teams, you should just do 20 teams and you should divide it into conferences and then have a, a two round conference championship tournament. We Correct. have a semifinal against two divisions and then a final championship game um, to determine the winner of that conference. Just do 20 teams. Well, I, I, I disagree with the, I think the big 10 should keep their name forever. And I hope it gets to like 30 teams. Cause that would be funny. And like, why would they change now? It's been 14 teams forever and they've still have been the big 10. And now it's 16. Um, I do agree, though. Like, it's it feels like we're just going to end up with – and I know everyone's upset, and I get it, because we talked about this on Thursday. It sucks to lose, like, certain brands of football. I love the different conferences and their different feels. But it does feel like we're going to end up with the SEC and the Big Ten, and it's just going to be, like, AFC, NFC. And you play – like, if they both end up with 24 teams – then you just have divisions of six teams. You play your division every year, and then you play a different division. And then you have a, a, a semifinal and a playoff in the Big Ten, and then you have a semifinal and a playoff in the SEC, and then those two teams play each other, and we call it the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's, it, it that's what's so perfect about doing <laughs> like breaking these down into having semifinals and finals. Like, listen, we know that we love football. Professional football has, in my opinion, the best postseason. I know you guys like bowl games, which I do too. But NFL postseason is amazing. Just do that format in college football. Everybody, the, the whole hand wringing for the last twenty years, like, oh, I don't know if the fans are going to want a playoff. Fuck you. Yes, we do want a playoff. It would be incredible. There's literally no downside to having a playoff. Division one, double A, now FCS. They figured it out a long time ago. They're able to do a playoff. It fucking kicks ass. Do Correct. It. Do it at the highest level. Like we're going to love it. Stop. Stop pretending that we're not going to like it because we will. And then, and then do it, have the Big Ten and the SEC be the two mega conferences and have every other conference combine into a different league that plays for a playoff as well. And then we have relegation and we're fine. How electric mm-hmm. would that be? If you're like, yep. if you're an Oklahoma State fan, you're like, hey, if we win this other mega conference, we're now in the SEC. And then you, imagine- you kick out, I mean, va- like the Vandys of the world would just be gone forever. They just drop and never come back. But it would be, It'd be great to watch and have like those like if you want the the argument be- about college football, which I always agree with, is like it does feel like every game matters because one loss would kind of kick you out of the playoff. So why not have every game matter where a few losses kicks you out of the top division? You know what I've been thinking? Like, what if there was that relegation? And to use your Oklahoma State analogy, what if Oklahoma State could beat Oklahoma? and force Oklahoma to be relegated while Oklahoma State got uh, moved up into like the SEC. How how sweet of an occasion would that be for the alumni of that school and, and, and for the students to like to do the worst, like put your your most hated rival in the most misery possible because of a football game. Right. That's that's what sports is about. And they would still play big time football the next year because they'd just be being a, a like basically a division of everyone who got left out of the ACC, Big Twelve, and Pac twelve. Like those are some really good teams still. And I don't know. I feel like it, it would be weird, but I think it would work and it would be fun. We're gonna have Andy Staples on 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 Monday's show to break it all down. But I I'm I w- also thinking the the big news is like I think Notre Dame finally after forever is going to have to join the Big Ten, which I'm excited. I don't think they are. I don't think they are. There's going to be a ton of money thrown at them. There's going to be so much money, but Notre Dame absolutely loves having the power. Of course. We're going to play our own schedule. We're going to pick our opponents in the weeks that we want them, and our brand is big enough that it's actually good that we're able to do this. I don't think they need to be in a conference, which it's one of those quirks about college football that like, it it makes no sense, and – it might not be the fairest way to do it, but it's just kind of like college football is a sport that has largely been like, this is the way that it's always been done. And that's why it is the way that it is right now. That's kind of their explanation for everything. And and they used to be able to just get away with it all the time, but now there's just too much money and, and the realignment is forcing people's hands to actually have to make progressive changes. But with Notre Dame, they can just be like, no, you know what? I think I'm good. I think, you know, this is the way we've always done. It, so that's the way we're going to do it. 
But if it becomes so, the reason the the alternate side of it is they, Notre Dame has always stayed out because of money and TV. Now the money and TV has become like the Big Ten or the SEC can offer more money and more TV than Notre Dame on their own can. That's just like a fact. They they are the the new TV deal that the Big Ten is going to do is going to fucking be insane. And if the Big Ten and SEC are the only two mega conferences, they then get to decide the playoff, and they could just be like, "You guys aren't invited." Like Notre Dame, you're not invited because you're not in our conference. Like, they, you know what I mean? They have they hold that power where I think Notre Dame will eventually have to just be like, all right. And it it always has made sense for them to be in the Big Ten. It would be great. They already have rivalries with like half of the Big Ten. So why not do it? Actually, they have rivalries with all the Big Ten now because USC's in it. They, all the, like, it, they, they, we, we, like all we got to do is add Navy to the fucking Big Ten. And then Notre Dame can't be like, no, we lose our rivalry games. If it gets to that point where it's like you have to be in the Big Ten to make the playoff, then yes, that that's right. what will but make that's what Notre I Dame. Gonna happen. But they might, they might do that bullshit thing that they did a couple of years ago, where they're like, you know what, we're we're going to consider ourselves part of the ACC for a year, like like that that whole thing, like we're going to play an ACC schedule. Um, they they could do something like that, but um, I I think that they have turned down more money before. Yeah, but this I think is going to be this is going to be insane money, and I I just think that this is like I. If I had to bet right now in the next five years, I think Notre Dame will be in, in the Big Ten. If the con- if the uh, conferences get into some sort of a playoff format that would make it um, like a necessity to be in the Big Ten, then yes, they'll do it. Uh, besides that, I'll take over five years. On okay. Notre Dame. I think they would do it even without that stipulation. I think it's just going to – it's like everything's changing so rapidly and the money's getting so ridiculous that I think it's going to end up being – they're just going to have to do it. And it will be great. It's like such a natural fit. You know what I mean? It's when everyone's saying like, how are we going to do the USC and UCLA? There's all the way on the West Coast. Fucking Notre Dame's in Indiana. Like well, they should be in the Big Ten. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, how do you think Bill Walton's taking the news? Not well. I Conference well, of Champions. I should say, has he heard the news yet? I think he's heard the news. Because he's, he's in off-season mode. So he might not have heard the news. He I think just he heard. definitely has like his wife probably has like Google alerts set up for anything just related to the Pac-12. Yeah, just like Bill, did you hear this? And then he just he needs he needs a moment. No, the a question is, the, I don't think the question is have, has Bill Walton heard the news yet. The question is, has Bill Walton forgotten the news yet? Correct. He, yeah, he probably has a, a, absorbed it and then released it out into the world. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's all one song. Um, okay, let's get to Hot Seat Cool Throne. We Again, we have Billy Mitchell, one of the greatest heels of all time, coming up in studio. Uh, Hot Seat Cool Throne is brought to you by our friends at Chevy, the most durable, reliable vehicle on the road. Silverado is as strong and dependable as the people who drive them. Chevy Silverado, modern and advanced, with a ton of grit, a partner in getting things done, especially when it comes to the heart and soul of a pickup truck, the bed. Because with Silverado, you get the most functional bed of any competitor, best-in-class standard cargo volume, Inner gate folds to a large step for easy getting in and out of the bed. Available industry first power up down tailgate or the available multi flex tailgate we've been telling you about with six convenient configurations. All this makes the bed of the Silverado work harder and smarter. It's truck season. Summer is truck season. Whether you're tailgating, whether you're bringing the boat to the lake, uh, whether you're in the Jersey Shore and you have a great Chevy Silverado like PFT that has Joey and Pat all over it. Chevy Silverado is the greatest truck ever. It's strong, advanced, dependable, and hardworking. So thank you to our friends at Chevy Silverado. Go to a Chevy Silverado dealership right now. Whisper PMT in their ear. $100 off your Chevy Silverado. And a free tank of gas, which, I mean, that's that's like $200 now. And Mm -hmm. a cup of coffee. All because you listen to this show and you know that Chevy Silverado makes the best trucks ever. Okay. Hot seat, cool throne, Hank. Uh, my hot seat is Drew Drew Locke. Uh oh, yeah. He Sports Center, uh, the account tweeted a tennis clip and just said this was cold blooded. Uh, a, a Twitter account named Seahawks fan for life, Seahawks fan two three one four, just replied to it as in a trolley way. I said not a sport. And then the U.S. Open verified tennis account replied to that guy and says, not a sport, says the person about to watch 17 games of Drew Locke at QB, which went viral. And then mm-hmm. everyone was just roasting Drew Locke. So Drew Locke, 
was just was working out off season, summer, probably doing his thing. And then just had to realize that he was trending on Twitter and everyone was just destroying him. Like just, just a tough, tough time. You never, you never, sometimes it's deserved, but when it's undeserved like that, I almost feel bad. That's what yeah. happens when you come after the sport of tennis. Oh, yeah. stop it, Jake. Wow. Ah. Um, it is so much worse, the fact that it was a tennis account. Yeah. And did you see the, the ricochet uh, vi- virality? How basically the internet works. If one thing of this type of joke goes viral, people are like, let me just make it in a different format. And it's just guys keep saying they, they want football to be back. And this is what they're missing. And it's a screen grab of the bear a Bears game where they're like they it's like punt, punt, fumble, interception, punt. And I've just ignored it. But because I really like if you're gonna do that, do the Seahawks game when Jimmy Clausen started and and John Fox punted like 12 times in a row. Do that. Like at least be at least use the correct Bears game for something like this. But I, I hate those ricochet viral moments where it's like you did this tweet because the US Open went viral. That's the only reason. Yeah, there are a few a few players that you can like call your your ricochet virality off. Like when Drew Locke goes viral, probably wh- was it what was he rapping on the sidelines? I don't when he know. reached uh, his peak Jeezy. as a quarterback, Young Jeezy put on when, for my city. Yeah, yeah. When Drew Locke goes viral, like Young Jeezy is probably going to be going viral shortly thereafter. Tua as well. That's Tua's, a great clip. Tua is always a ricochet virality moment, like waiting to happen, where like someone just yeah. throws something either. Actually, Tua gets it both ways because I saw like there was one where this this uh, woman was threw a bomb at a tailgate and they're like just got signed to the Dolphins because Tua can't throw deep. Or if someone like misses something it's easily, they're like, looks like looks like Tua out there. So Tua just gets it every day. Yeah, Tua is a big one. Carson Wentz is unfortunately sad to say one of those guys, too. Yeah, he gets a lot of the ricochet shot. Kirk Cousins. Also, listen, we talk more shit about Kirk Cousins than anyone. It's all completely deserved but i'd say like him and Derek carr are the other ones that if yeah. anytime somebody does something bad they're gonna go viral and I, I like do you i imagine them like Derek carr sees like drew lock going viral it's like oh fuck i'm next Uh-oh. this sucks <laughs> like oh they're I mean, going they're going after us now <laughs> Derek carr probably blocks him blocks drew lock in advance to try to prevent going viral yeah does he block you he blocks like everybody uh i don't think he blocks me but yeah, it is funny to see the the ricochet because the Bears as a franchise always get the ricochet off of any of these. And then it's just certain players. Once once the internet has some blood for like, ooh, we can get retweets on making fun of this quarterback, it just it's open season for a while. Also, no Deshaun Watson news still either. Mm. Yeah, weird. Something's happening we, there. We did pay report attention. it though. Yeah. So right. Yeah. Follow follow the follow the leaks. Uh, all right, your cool throne, Hank. Uh, my cool throne is just us, society, the world, everything. Uh, I don't know if you oh. guys saw this headline, but it's 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 concerning. Yeah, which one? The world's largest. Pa- yes, the world's largest particle accelerator, CERN, CERN, is turning back on today at unprecedented levels. Many believe a portal to another dimension is going to be opened. Shit. So we're they're they're doing it. Yeah, like they're. They're this doing is it. What this happened. thing looks like it's straight out of a movie. It's like a big, like fucking laser beam blaster into another portal. This is kind what of happened exciting. In, in summer of 2016, Hank. This is what this is what stopped the world and made everything after that a simulation. So this might just be the reset button. We might be going back to the this summer of 2016. That thing? Yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. We're running it back. You're gonna wake up tomorrow morning and you're gonna be playing Dimmy with the boys. You're gonna have the Harambe shirts everywhere. It's gonna be great. Hank's gonna be living his best life. But you're gonna you're gonna get demoted. You're no longer gonna be CEO. True. That's true. But I, it'd probably be worth it. I think. Yeah. Trade it all. Trade it all. Just go back <laughs> to the, the life you had. <laughs> trade it all. Be back trade, in summer 2016 again. Trade it all to, for you to be the one who falls asleep on part of my take Zoom calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's t- t- summer 2016. I was, I was, I was, I was doing that. Yeah. People um, forget. Uh, okay. I just P- didn't have my camera on. <laughs> PFT, your hot seat, cool drone. Yeah, no, no. Hank had my hot seat. Humanity. He he nailed it. I didn't think that Hank was going to be dropping CERN large particle collider references on part of my take, but this is where we are as a unit. Uh, my cool throne is words of I wisdom. Love large particle collectors. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Accelerators. Uh, my, my, yeah, colliders. <laughs> my cool throne is words of wisdom. So uh, I, I am at a uh, beach house here in the Jersey Shore this summer. Big Cat alluded to the, the big gay truck I've got parked outside, which is phenomenal. Um, and in this house, the person that decorated this house probably had an operating budget of, I'd say, like, Two, three hundred thousand to exclusively spend on like stuff that you hang on the wall from Target or Home Goods, and it's just everywhere. So I wrote down some of the sayings that, that I've just noticed in the first like two days I've been in the house. Um, people disappoint. Chocolate is eternal. Facts. So true. Keep calm and eat a cookie. Also facts. So I'm true. sensing a trend. Yeah. No. There's a, there's a lot of stuff like that. There's um oh. You'll, you'll like this one, Big Cat. A cup of coffee solves everything. Here's another one. <laughs> Absolute fact. Uh, my brain has too many tabs open. Ooh, it's so true. That's oh good. God. That's a good Yeah, one. no, these are good. And then life is what you make it. But then under make it, it's got instructions on how to make a margarita. Ooh, it's so true. I like that one. So like there's, there's literally too much truth in this house. It's like every wall, every, and I'm just scratching the surface on this. Every wall has at least like three different signs hanging off it that somebody saw at Target. And they're like, oh, that's cute. Oh, that's precious. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I guess I'm just going to be the most enlightened human being uh, after I'm done living in this house for the summer. But I'm, I'm very excited to keep uncovering all the different sayings they have up. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep chronicling those as they, as they show themselves to me in this house. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, all right. My hot seat. So Friday, we're going to do a uh, three-hour Dungeons and Dragons with uh, Tim Woods. So get ready for that. So we're not going to have a fire fest. So and and this is really just something that needs to be discussed. My hot seat is Liam Bubba. Um, last night we were on the group text, yucking it up, having some fun, talking with the boys, and uh bubba then, boys. yeah Bub bubba then sent back four screenshots of the group text by accident so yeah i don't i don't know what to think at this point because um whenever someone accidentally sends you a screenshot of a conversation it's like so who were they sharing it with who uh, who is this supposed to go to because it clearly wasn't supposed to go to us and uh yeah we're it's it's bad times for Bubba right now. He's um, on my. I do seat. have a folder of just funny texts, so hmm. um, that's where I was going to. I did delete it because I was like, hmm. I don't want that to happen again. Hmm. Um, hmm. What kind of what kind of so, other yeah. fun? There's a fun bunch text of from the guys. Uh, were in there the was fun like text a lot of old folder. videos and shit that we hmm. had. Hmm. And you just deleted hmm. all of them, so like we can't even see them now. Correct, because hmm. I was because like, he didn't want this to happen again. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. 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 And I may or may not have been talking in these text messages about doing cocaine. So hmm. why would hmm. why would I send that to somebody? I don't. I. You should ask yourself <laughs> that. I would. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not I, lying, but it. But definitely I think this like is a very hard. relatable thing that people have either done themselves or had it happen to them, where someone accidentally sends back a screenshot of your conversation, and you're just like, "Uh oh, where is this supposed to go?" There was a moment. It was actually probably like five minutes after he sent those back, and Big Cat and me were both like, "Uh, what? What is yeah, this?" Uh, that huh? I just, I just, I just started to sweat. Thinking about being in yes. Liam's position and imagining what he's going through. And yes. it was like, it made me feel awkward. I was like, I was hanging out with, with my friends here and I was feeling awkward for Liam, who's probably just staring at his phone. Yes. Hundreds of miles and, away trying to figure and, out how to get his way out of this one. And we did like the a mean, Stella's barking, but we did the mean thing, but it wasn't intentional. It was just like, that's the end of the conversation. We didn't text for the rest of the night. Like we just stopped. <laughs> so it was like even worse for him because he was just sitting there like, oh, they they stopped texting after this. So yeah, we, we knew the cops were on the block. Yeah, well, we had some good jokes going, obviously. <laughs> and that's why it was getting saved to the to the PMT funny chat moments file hmm. that he's got. Hmm. I, I feel good, though, because like, yeah, Big Cat, you were talking. I was talking about not doing coke. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm coming true. out smelling like roses on this one. Yes, yes. 
Yes. <laughs> Me too. Oh, man. Um, okay. Well, it needed to be addressed. I think we all agreed that it had to be a mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. No, I know I would get roasted. I actually – I was <laughs> – I I must have uh, forgotten how to use my phone in a uh, – just being drunk for five days in a row. I, I had a worse one doing that. I, um, I sent a, uh, a girl's Instagram story and to her on accident and said, this girl's the worst person on the planet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh my God. Liam, <laughs> just, I don't care. You need to, you need to have somebody else hold You need to have you, Donis Haslam, hang on to your phone for you. Yeah, because that's that's a, that's a pretty bad couple days of phone management on your part. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Also, Bubba, dude. what you should do is you should just relabel all of our names in the group chat as other people's names in this group chat, so it looks like Billy sent the text about mm-hmm. cocaine and mm-hmm. not Big Cat, and then and yeah. then you can publish it. I w- it wasn't being published, but I mean, I understand. It sounds I, like it I, listen. I'll defend you uh, in this respect that we're we, what we were talking about was Fourth of July being on a it Monday. Was fun. Fourth of July being on a Monday is like it's it's a gauntlet for anyone who's partying because it's basically you have to start on Friday and you go all like when Fourth of July is on a Wednesday or a Thursday and it's the start of the partying. You can like, but. Monday rolled around and everyone I think was like, "Well, we got to keep partying. It's Fourth of July, even though it's been three days." So it's well, definitely I was really a tough time. Yeah, you were like, "You were like, yeah. what time are we recording tomorrow?" And I was like, "I'm so excited to not drink tomorrow." Yeah, yeah. Well, like, that's the thing about three day weekends. I think all three day weekends should be Friday off. It should yeah. not be tack on a Monday because people forget that when you're drinking on that Monday, like that's your Sunday. Mm-hmm. No, more normal people don't go out and get loaded on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. If they have to work all week, they forced our hand into doing that this time. And yeah, I just can't. I, I personally can't get drunk anymore. I just get tired. After, also, you know, also like PS- 10 beers. I just want to fall asleep. Yeah. And a PSA. We've said this before. We're not going to judge anyone who does anything, but just do make sure you're, you get your drugs tested because it's fucked up right now. So that's just a mm-hmm. cocaine is cocaine is bad. So do, don't do it. Uh, yeah. an extra I'll say PSA. it. I'll say it. Not going to I'm not going to judge anyone for doing anything, but just do make sure you're safe, please. I will. I'll judge you. OK, um, I will not judge you. Yeah, I will not throw rocks from a glass house. I will just say and instead, that's it. Please <laughs> get your powders tested. Hank's right. If you do have some leftover that's been tested, co- cocaine's not good. Give it to me. No questions <laughs> asked. I'll take yeah. care. But only the tested kind. Um, yeah. all right, my cool throne is uh, buying an extra bag of chips or as the Wall Street Journal said, pack of chips. Um, there was a, I don't know if you guys saw this. Wall Street Journal had a story in it. So I'm not laughing at the fact that it, inflation is crazy and people are struggling right now because obviously that's fucked up. I'm laughing at the fact that it looked like an Onion article from the Wall Street Journal. It was a guy sitting next to a lake, kind of like sitting down sadly, and it said, unable or willing to stomach higher prices, many Americans are skipping some extra purchase, or purchases and outings, even the smallest luxuries. And then in quotes, I kind of second guess if I really need to get this ac- extra pack of chips. So um, always buy the extra bag of chips. It's bag, not pack. Nice job, Wall Street Journal. You're fucking narcs. But uh, yeah, it, times are tough. But the extra bag of chips will never – you'll never be like, I shouldn't have bought this extra bag of chips. There's a lot of things that you would regret buying. An extra bag of chips is never one of them, ever. Yeah, just th- – yeah, there are certain things that you can eliminate from your budget and you'll be fine. Like maybe take like one step down in terms of – the type of liquor that you buy, you don't have to go top shelf, go mid shelf, or if you're mid shelf, go a little bit lower. Um, just no more condoms. We're not doing condoms anymore. That's an easy mm-hmm. way to mark down right there. Uh, but when it comes to the chips, like the small pleasures in life, they're actually they they far outweigh their value. Like how much yeah. does that extra bag of chips cost? <laughs> Excuse me, pack. It's probably one ninety nine, depending on mm. like if we're talking about big thing of Tostitos or we're talking about like a thing of Doritos, like one ninety nine to three ninety nine, something like that. The amount of joy that you get out of those like two to five dollars, it's it's worth hundreds. It really is. Immeasurable. Like it, it's the small the small things in life are worth more than the big things sometimes. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe just buy a really good chip clip. Because those, like, if you get a good chip clip, you can buy all the chips because then you can keep them fresh. So just do that. That's the smart economic move here is don't skip the extra bag of chips. Just get something that seals them and then always get the extra bag of chips. And then you got chips for days. 
And let's bring back well, yeah, siphoning or just get gas one bag while we're and have on it. Be, have it be the biggest bag. Yeah, huge bag. Because then it's technically just one bag. Mondo yeah. bag. What if you get a giant bag and you go into the store and then you fill it up with like smaller bags of chips, but as you're walking out, you're like, no, it's open. I brought this bag in with me. Mm. Just bring back stealing in general. Siphoning <laughs> gas from your neighbors. Whoever has the nicest car on the block, go steal some of their gas out. But be what careful. It's a Tesla? But be careful because I don't know if I ever told this story. The gas comes out really fast because I have siphoned gas before and I drink a lot of gas. It comes out really, yeah, really fast. Way faster than you think. Way, way faster. <laughs> That's just a fact. If you if you start the suction, it's coming fast. Bonk. Yeah, I knew you were going to do that. All right, Jake, <laughs> finish us off. Hot seat, cool throw them before we get to Billy Mitchell. My hot seat is Fenway Park. So two weeks from now, we have the captain documentary beginning, and they put a giant billboard on Fenway Park of Derek Jeter. Wow. Talk about irony. Also, what hey. was that? What was that Red Sox player who said Wrigley's just stock and uh, I can't even remember because I was trying my best to just like just be offline as much as possible. But there was like a Red Sox player that just bashed Wrigley for no reason. What was that, Hank? Did you see I, that? I couldn't tell you. No, yeah, I did not. I don't know. He's was, probably was, talking about Bryce Harper's dog. <laughs> it was one of the pitchers and he got like lit up and he's like, yeah, it's just a regular ballpark. It's like, OK, cool. Like, we know you're lying, but that's OK. I, I do think that yeah, it is Wrigley big and time. Fenway are in, are in a league of their own. Right. There's no reason right. to bash one of them just because you had a bad outing. Uh, that's kind of relatable, though. Yeah. It, okay. It is. It is disrespectful, though, that there's a there's a giant Jeter yeah. poster on on Fenway. It's competitive. Park. Yeah, the Jeter poster is funny. It because it is very very out there. And uh, w- by the way, uh, can we just like this Jeter documentary is going to be the most boring documentary of all time? Yeah. Because he's oh, gonna, any, I'm out. Documentaries that are made by the the people just suck. But like it's propaganda. Like but Jeter's like gonna, King of if King of Kong was made by Billy Mitchell. It would, it would he wouldn't be the villain. You that's know what I mean? true. Because like, he would make himself like look cool. But like when you ha- you need to have a neutral third party director for these documentaries, or and else it, they're all like the same. And it's also Derek Jeter is going to do that thing where he's like, "You guys, I I was famously private." I never let, never let anyone into my inner circle. Now I'm going mm-hmm. to. And it's just not going to be anything because he's still going to be private. Like someone as private as Derek Jeter doesn't all of a sudden say, let me tell you every story. It's just not going to happen. So I'm already out. Yeah. I'm out on that. Hey, so I agree with you 100%. Like young, young, young girls and stuff. Like he's not going to talk about the, the good yeah. stuff. I, I agree with Hank 100%. When it comes to like all time great guess, athletes. Like, let's be honest. No, when it comes to all time great athletes in, in their sports, if they're doing like a documentary or like a series documentary about themselves and how they're going through, you know, they're, they're like the end of their career transition to the next element, it is bullshit when it's made and produced by the person that it's about. I agree with you, Hank. So have you watched Tom versus Time? Yeah, I have. And I, it was a little bit, I don't know. It wasn't, that's like a main reason of, of this point that I'm making. Like I think a Tom Brady documentary that was made by someone where he didn't have as much control would probably be a little bit better. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I agree. I, and I agree. that's like, I think there's a lot, I think a lot of, it's not just Tom or his time. There's like, I'm a, I'm a doc head myself and they're just not as good when they're made by like produced and, and all that stuff by the person. Yeah. That was like, um, you know, what's one did it for me is the uh, Chris Carton one. Remember when Chris Carton had yeah. a documentary? He's uh, like, yeah. I want to hear all, I want to hear like the real, real stories. And it was not. And it was just like, okay, this isn't as fun as I thought. So that's why I'm Derek Cheater. You're out. You're fired. Yeah. I have the quote, by the way. It was me and said, that's Josh Winkowski, who's a pitcher, a little underwhelming on Wrigley Field. Fenway has a presence to it. I really didn't get that here, to be honest. I said to my mom last night, this place is very stock standard. Yeah. Stock standard. That's what it was. I don't know. Yeah. Come on, that's dude. A, that's a it's a national that's landmark. A bit of a take. It's a la- national yeah. landmark. You were yeah, I agree with Hank though. Like if he just uh, the next day was like, hey, I was I was mad. I'd I'd actually I'd like who hasn't who among us hasn't lashed out in times of passion? That was like the Phillies mm-hmm. player a few months ago, right? Was it Alec yeah. Bohm or someone flicked off the yeah, fans he was like, like, like it was just something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then he admitted it, and he was like, I was mad. I was it was a passion moment. It's like, dude, I love that. That's exactly what it yeah. should be. Yeah. Um, um, okay, and your cool anyways, throne? My cool throne is the wild meter. We have a few notable ones over the weekend. Oh, boy. Uh, first off, 
Buddy and Jimmy Beheim are both on the Pistons summer league roster. So uh, why it, wild? It, it continues, and then this morning, the <laughs> Sharks like, hired. What? I was just gonna say, is that a favor that they're doing to Jim Beheim? I don't know. No, I mean, it's wild. Buddy PFT. signed a two. Come on, <laughs> Buddy signed a two way. So uh, the San Jose Sharks uh, hired Mike Greer, whose older brother is Chris Greer. So now the Sharks and the Dolphins GMs are brothers. And they both are in the ocean. Wow. Wild. Wild. <laughs> That's Wild. crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. So, Whoa. Yeah. The wet boys. I'm, I'm trying to think of any other ocean animals with that are pro sports teams. Marlins. Marlins. Their next GM is going to be a, be a Greer. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. The uh, Kraken. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the Kraken too. Yeah. So, wow. We'll see. Wild. That wow. is Wild. Um, okay, yeah. thank you, Jake. That was that Lakers was great. are made out of water. Yeah, the Whalers, yeah. R.I.P. Killed whales that were in water. Yeah. Then so they became cool. the Hurricanes, which are made out of water. Yep, that's true. That's a fact. Um, that's okay. wild. That is wild. Uh, okay, let's get to Billy Mitchell. I this is I, I've never been alpha more. In, the, in an interview than I was with Billy Mitchell just because his presence is incredible. Um, but yeah, I think people are going to really like this interview. And again, if you haven't seen King of Kong, Fistful of Quarters, we're not just saying this because we personally like it. I actually think that if you look at like any documentary list, it's a top 10 documentary of all time. It's like it's it's frozen in time, something that you'll never be able to replicate. So definitely watch it and enjoy the Billy Mitchell interview. Before we do that, PFT, you had a quick word. Yeah, before we get, get to Billy Mitchell, I want to talk to you guys about iTrust. By now, you've probably heard all about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. You might even already be investing in them. But did you know that you can invest in cryptocurrencies through your retirement account? That's right. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies from a crypto IRA and get all the same tax advantages as a traditional IRA. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in over two dozen of the most popular cryptocurrencies. And unlike the stock market, you can buy and sell 24 hours a day. The iTrust Capital platform is easy to use. It only takes a few minutes to create that account. Setting up an IRA is free, and iTrust fees are low. It's time to start taking control of your financial future. With iTrust Capital, you can get all the tax benefits of a retirement account while investing in crypto. Visit itrust.capital slash take to start investing today. That's itrust.capital slash take. Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment with risk of loss. iTrust Capital Inc. does not provide legal investment or tax advice. Consult with a qualified legal investment or tax professional. And now here's Billy Mitchell. Okay, we now welcome on um, a very special guest. I am. We are, we are right now in the presence of greatness. Not only one of the greatest uh, video game players of all time, but one of the greatest villains of all time. And it is Billy Mitchell, and uh, from you know you might know him from uh, King of Kong's Fistful of Quarters or his hot sauce, but he came in with a huge box and he started to open. I said, "Billy, stop! Let's do this on the podcast. I want everyone, all the listeners, and the people watching on YouTube to get the full Billy Mitchell experience because I'd imagine the full Billy Mitchell experience is unlike any other experience in the entire world. Fair to say." I'd say that's absolute gospel. Okay, yes. All right, so go ahead. go Proceed with the box, and then we'll do the interview. Well, I'm the kind of guy, we've talked about coming here for a long time. Yep. Yeah. I've, e I've even had people make comments on social media. Oh, you got to go on there. I thought, why did they suggest I go on there? I guess you guys have been talking about it for a little bit. Yes. Yeah, we reviewed well, the, the documentary on the show, I think, last year. I, I, speaking for myself and Big Cat, I don't know about these guys, but we, we were introducing in like 2000, mid-2000s, around when the documentary came out, but... We did a big, during quarantine, we reviewed King of Kong and introduced some of our listeners to it. And ever since then, they've been they've been demanding Billy Mitchell yeah. on the show. We're just fans of you and everything that comes with you. Well, with that information coming to me, I did some teasers of my own. Maybe you know or maybe you don't know that I happened to put together a bottle and I sent it to, uh, to Dave, a barstool hot sauce, and I just sent it. No contact information, no anything, <laughs> no nothing, no hello, no goodbye anything and then maybe a, a week later somebody forwards me something on one of your social medias where he opened it up it's wow that's cool 
and that was all. Now, do you do that often? Is it like, uh, yeah. you know, the Godfather, a horse head in the bed? You just like, whether it's an enemy or someone that you're friendly with, you just send them a hot sauce bottle and nothing. No return address, no name, nothing. Yeah, rarely is it friendly, but yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Just like buzzing their tower. Let, yeah. let them know that you're there. Yeah, you're watching. Yeah. You and, have their address. And then the next encounter, we were supposed to do uh, a pizza review at, in Fort Lauderdale, and the day before it was to happen, he had an emergency, he had to run. Uh, so that really did happen. But the most outrageous thing was, I was at a place in Fort Lauderdale called Glitch, and I was doing a perfect game. And what I, What do you mean, when you say you I were was, doing a perfect game? I was playing Pac-Man, I was making an attempt at doing a perfect score. Okay. And I did achieve it, and when I was done, I was told that there was a guy doing a pizza review next door. The buildings are attached to each other. He was a, he was, I don't know, 100 feet away or 100 yards away. And so then we checked on your social media and he did it right there while I was playing the game. He did his pizza review. Incredible. Oh so we came so that close to crossing History pass. right there in the same 100, 100 feet of uh, Florida strip mall. It's almost too much alpha for one, yeah. one strip mall. Okay, right. so what do we have in the box? You just opened the box. Hmm. Where shall we start? Oh, I want that. Oh, wow. Oh, he's putting the, <laughs> he put the belt on his shoulder. What does it say? Well, that's when I went down to Australia for the Kong Off World Championship. 2019 <laughs> Australian Kong Off champion. Now, there's great people there, great guys there. And I gave him an ass whipping. Yeah, was yeah. it even close? Was there anyone even close? There's great players there. However, it goes down to a group of 16, just like March Madness. Mm-hmm. The first guy I had to play was a friend, and he was he was a cream puff. Yeah, come on. The next guy I had to play was really, really good. He actually won it last year. His name was uh, Andrew. So now, <laughs> brace yourself here. You're really going to think a little of me. The next guy I had to face off against was my son. Oh, really? <laughs> but that's kind of cool. Yeah, that, we're like... down to the final four, and I got to play my son. And I'm thinking, like, can't we change this around a little bit? Yeah, and did you wax him, though? No, so I says to him, I go, he's good. But I says to him, I go, Hey, I'll let you win. You can beat these guys. He goes, you better not. I mean, my my son's a soldier, so there was no... I played. I had a good game. He didn't. I won. So then we went down to the final championship against a guy named Shane, a great guy, and yes, I won. Love it. That's kind of so, great, though, you that, that your lineage is 50% of the final four. Yeah. Yeah. It's Wait, incredible. That's, when you, yeah. When you say soldier, he's in the U.S. military. Yes, he's a gra okay. he's a graduate of West Point. Got it. Okay. okay. All right. So, Because, I, you know, it's tough when video games get involved. We have a guy around here who pretends that he's a soldier because he plays Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like when someone says, what do you do for a living? Oh, hi, Billy. I'm a model. You know, where do you model? Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There you go. Exactly. Whoa, we these are cool. All right. These are part of my take mouse pads. Love that. Incredible. Did you make that yourself? Do you make those yourself? Well, me and my team. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Just tossing them around. Then the other one for what we're set up here to do. Uh, so there's 12 podcasters, mm -hmm. two teams of six, and we're going to see who does what. Love it. Who Very are you nice. teamed up with, PFT? I, I actually have no idea. Oh, here it is. So anyway, we got a... PFT we got a whole, and Billy. A whole bunch of these. I wasn't asked oh, to great. do it. Wonderful. Just, just to put the uh, heat on you guys, I got so many, you could actually like give some away to the audience. Ooh, okay. Look at this. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna. That's never gonna happen. But now, I appreciate Billy, that. Billy, I've got. A, I've got kind of a wide open. Wash question them here. off. Yeah. Um, have you always been a winner? Yes. At everything. Yes, I always win. Always. always? Like even when you always. were a little kid. Do you remember the first time you won something? No. <laughs> but you just remember no, like always when it's always very important when i say that i always win always 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 for example i came here okay i come prepared whether i do a good podcast or not i'm gonna win because i've made the right effort i've made the right impression mm -hmm. yeah i win um i'll go out to eat with somebody and they want to pay the bill or i want to pay the bill I already made arrangements ahead of time with the maitre d. The bill's already paid. I always win. Step ahead. Got it. So, when was the last time you didn't win something? Uh, an argument with my wife. Yeah. I uh -huh. never win. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> That's humble pie, though. No, but um, when I go places, there's great players. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've squared off against other guys that are great, say, at Donkey Kong. I mean, they have a good day and I have a bad day. It happens. Um, but I always walk away 
with the experience, absolutely experience of a winner. I'm always happy for the guy that won. I always, you know, shake hands and have the right effect and things like that. Now, on your best, on your best day, can anyone touch Billy Mitchell? Well, overall, yeah, no, but that's on my best day, right? On their best day, I'd I'd have a tough time, right? Mm -hmm. Right. What what current records do you hold? Current, yes, that's a tough one. Um, well, let's start like with Pac Man. I was the first one to do a perfect score, right? And what's absolutely gorgeous about that is other people can do it friends can play we can learn we can teach we can have fun they can do it but they're simply repeating what i already did right there's only one man on the, who stepped on the moon first right right so it's it's fun being neil armstrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay what else any other ones oh that's cool that's, that's a very poster, cool yeah. poster barstool arcade classic championship is there like one record that you have that is you know the one that you're most proud of oh absolutely it'd be the Perfect Pac-Man because, again, it remains infinite. Um, and that's the one that brought me to Japan. That's the one that put me on stage at the Tokyo Game Show. And uh, it was at that point, I would say, that I started appearing or I'd be somewhere in public. Six out of seven days, somebody would come up and say, I know you, I know you. Yeah. After the movie came out, it went to seven out of seven. It, there hasn't been a day in many, many years that I walk outside somewhere or I'm in the public, that people don't... You're a legend. And right. You, and I you've got a, a distinct look, too. No. Is the, uh, so you're going double American flag there with the tie and the pocket square. Mm -hmm. Is this like your everyday outfit that you wear around? This is the only outfit I have. I wear this to bed. Love it. <laughs> like I, Inspector Gadget just going through the, uh, <laughs> the closet and everything's the same? No. no. Well, the truth is I have like a lot of different patriotic ties. Mm -hmm. You know, I have um, West Point tie. I have regular ties too. I know that's like hard to believe, but um, I mean, I go somewhere, I meet people or I visit people. It's difficult for me not to go and be respectful to present myself as best I can. I go to a convention, people pay money, they go in the convention, they go there to say hi, and what, I would go there and sit around or be lazy or not give my best performance. I would right. be disappointed if, always... I, if I paid money for a convention and Billy Mitchell was there and he was wearing like sweatpants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I want I want the full experience. You're giving your best. Yeah. Since this is part of my take, since you guys are sports guys, who did I learn this from? That you go somewhere, people pay money to see you, and if they pay money to see you, you go there, you dress your best, you present your best, you give your best foot forward, your best attitude. That would be our colleague. Deion, Deion Sanders. Close. What? As a kid, I heard that something like that said. From, you look good, you play good? From Tom Landry. Oh, oh Tom okay. Landry with the hat. And he always had the suit. All time yes, football in the hat. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I learned that as a kid, and it, it just, it always stuck with me. And so, believe me, I, contrary to popular belief, I dress very normally at times, mm -hmm. but not when I'm trying to be in person. Right, yeah. right. So... You mentioned there uh, six out of seven days you get recognized. And then when the documentary, which if you haven't seen, go watch it. King of Kong's Fistful of Quarters, one of the greatest documentaries of all time. That is not an exaggeration. That's just a fact. So you said that you got men you got recognized seven out of seven days. Right. Was there, have there been any negative interactions? Are people, you are a villain and I think you embrace that. Do people ever like come up to you and like, hey, Billy, fuck you. Oh, face to face, I don't think I've ever had a negative encounter. Oh, that's good. Not once. Uh, online. Oh, online. <laughs> we chat. <laughs> one of the, one of the favorite things that I do when I go on a show like this is we play hate mail with Billy Mitchell. Let's do it. So <laughs> I don't have that in the box. Here, okay. Okay. But I, but, but I'll, I'll actually work on that for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I would um, love to see some of the negative comments like on your Twitch stream. In and what's funny is I used to, but times have changed. I would get voicemails and I saved them. And so, yeah, I play them. Sometimes at a convention, it would be, you know, 21 years and older because they would play some of the voicemails that come on from people that I've never met who I don't know, who simply saw what they saw on the screen and, and have the opinions they have. Yeah. Now, were you surprised with your portrayal in the movie? Because when you film it, you know what you're putting out there. You know what some of the content's going to be because you were there at the time. But then afterwards, they edit it and it comes out and looks maybe a little bit different from how you thought 
you would be uh, portrayed in the Yeah, movie. I didn't think they were going to show me to be nearly as nice as they did. <laughs> <laughs> they cut out all the good stuff. But let me give you an honest answer. And that's a tough question for me to answer honestly, because I have to answer it honestly. They did have a lot of different angles that they played. They really played a very strong angle with that nice old lady that I was friends with, that I gave the Cuber to. Yeah. They did. They played that a lot. Um, they played Pac-Man angle a lot. Um, so yes, I was surprised because we didn't even know the title, but the other guy in the movie, remember that other guy? Shh. Won't say his name. We don't say his name around here. Yeah. You don't want to say Steve. Mm -hmm. Okay. SW word. Well, he was him, two producers and a director. They have friendships that went all the way back to childhood. Oh. So oh. it's my impression and I've never asked him, but it's a very strong impression that he had some idea of where it was going and that's fine. And um, I, as I look back now, how could I think that I was going to be anything other than the central character they portrayed? Right. Um, That's a live and, and learn. In all fairness to him, he's got blonde hair and blue eyes. He cannot be a bad guy. You can yeah. be, you know. I'm a bad guy. You pointed at me. Who's the guys. bad guy? Yeah. You the bad guy? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> and, never um, seen a bad guy like this. <laughs> But um, no, as, as I look at it, I, I guess I should have seen it that way. And it didn't matter. There were many times in filming that I was guarded on my words. And obviously, uh, I said enough to make them happy. There were times where I said something. I said something. Okay, I've said it. We've done this take eight times. No, again, again. The one that comes to mind is Billy Mitchell always has a plan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, I have that visually in my mind so strong and I'm like, why do I keep saying this over and over again? And I guess finally I said it just right. And that was more towards the end of the filming. Um, if I look back on the, <clears throat> the producer, um, he had terrific, I say this all the time, so if he hears this, it won't be, he had terrific bedside manner. He was never intrusive at all. He would just pop in the restaurant. I mean, like without any notice and he'd say hi and I go oh hi he'd say oh I'm he'd say I'm come by to eat lunch and I didn't know if you're busy today or what and I go um how about tomorrow or tonight and I was accommodating as best I could but he was never pushy for a second which obviously makes everybody comfortable um and to be honest he's still like that today he's the one guy from the film that I I still have some contact he, with. He, let me just say this though for the film like you just said, you know, you were always going to be portrayed the bad guy. But from someone who's watched it a few times and talked to other people, Steve Wiebe is, you know, the, 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 the film is about him, but there's only one guy you remember walking away, and it's Billy Mitchell. That's just a fact. If I saw Steve Wiebe on the street, I wouldn't be able to recognize him. You're Billy Mitchell. Uh, Steve told me that there's been a couple of times where he's recognized in public. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> no, I think so. By and, his wife. Um, yeah. And um, of course, when he goes to a convention, people know who he is. Right. Because he's walking um, around with a name card. Right. Um, well, I could have a lot of fun. <laughs> Steve, I'm going easy on you. <laughs> he's at the, he's you're at the you're meet getting me. the nice Billy Mitchell, Steve. He's at the meet me, no, but, Steve Weeby booth. <laughs> no, he, he's obviously. Um, Hi, my name is Steve Weeby. <laughs> come, come say hello to me. It says it right above him. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, I actually. Normally, before COVID, I would cross paths with him about once a year. I'd see him at a convention or something, and it was very cordial. Um, and so when people say, are you friends with him? I mean, we're friendly. Right. Um, I don't speak to him outside of that, though. And But by the same token, there's a tremendous amount of people that I don't speak to outside of that. There's some players that I do. There's some players I speak to almost daily because they're friends, not because they're players. Yeah. What about uh, Zach Campbell? Foul ball guy, as we call him. He's, he's a friend he, of ours. He's in, in that movie as well. Are you? Well, are you him I sent him a message yesterday. Are you still in New York? And he says, yeah, I'm on the upper side. And I told him where I was. And I told him that I'm going to go to Barcade tonight and tomorrow night. And I asked him if he could come down. I didn't know if you guys knew him. Yes. Yeah. Good no, friend of ours. He's been on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he has. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. he's a good dude. A bit of a rivalry against another good friend, Marlon's man, yeah. that goes way back. It got pretty ugly for a while. But um, yeah, he was, he was in that movie too, right? He was in yeah. King Kong. And the thing is... That's Whoa, probably, what was that? That's probably him answering my text message. Yeah. Wait, that's your phone? That's my phone. You can check it if you want to see if that was Zach. That's a hilarious That's ring your ringtone? 
<laughs> that was the text message ringtone. Now, what, what is that sound, sound effect from? Yeah. You don't know? I don't think you're qualified to do this interview. I'm probably Ooh. not. I'm Well, I'm definitely not. That's Donkey Kong. You're definitely not qualified to do this interview. <laughs> I took a guess. It was a 50-50 well, chance. Well, that was, that was Pac-Man. Now, that's the <laughs> okay. death of Pac-Man, which I'm not familiar with because my guys don't die. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, that's exactly why we don't Same. know it either because we're perfect I actually, score guys. I actually play Mrs. Pac-Man because I'm an ally, yeah. but you do you. <laughs> Wait, that's hilarious that you have the death of Pac-Man as your ringtone because you don't get to ever hear it in real life? Okay, I want you to read this text message. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is Zach Hampel here. It would be great to see you, but I'm planning to be at a Yankee stadium today and tomorrow, so time is a little tight. Hopefully you can make it happen and let me know what's up. It's, it it's also like very the Yankees funny. are more important to him than you. Well, it's very yeah. funny because that's perfectly Zach Hampel right there because there's two baseball games he has to attend over the course of two days, but that's like full... 12 hour commitments for him because he has to get there for batting practice. Right, but you're not keeping your priorities straight. I had the opportunity, mm -hmm. okay, to go to the Yankees game. They're going to put me in a limo in the skybox, okay, wow. cater to me and everything else. And I told them, no, I have the opportunity to go on Pardon My Take. And they I, understood. You're smart. So what's wrong with Zach? You're a smart man. I think Zach is just singularly focused Zach, on, yeah. on Zach, catching Zach, baseballs. You're, 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 bad, you're bad news, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Billy, what what do you say to the haters, though? The people that are like, he cheated. You got your your a couple of your scores ripped from Twin Galaxies, no? Where? Twin Galaxies, which I know you hate. How do you know that? Uh, I, I'll read a tweet that was so funny. I, I laughed out loud at you. No, your... no. How do you, how do you know that, that, that I hate? Um, I mean, you've said it. Have you not? When did you hear me say it or hear me quote it? Well, you t you tweeted, I'm looking for videographer, editor in Fort Lauderdale, Miami area to hire to help me produce content for YouTube. Looking for someone young and eager to travel. No haters, losers, or Twin Galaxy community members allowed. Okay, so how did I say it that I hated you? I hated them. They're just not allowed. I, you lumped them in oh, with so haters Oh, so now you've changed your story. They're not allowed, so you're lying. Yeah, well, you said that. No, they're not allowed. Well, no, not part of that community. It has yeah. to be independent. Right. So how do you say that I hate somebody? Oh, because you put them in the same sentence as haters and losers. Sounds like you're trying to wake a lot of us. Synonymous. All right. So, so what? 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 What is the status right now of the of the scores that were stripped, or where where are we at? Are we in the court well, system? Well, what Should I, we go after? Well, what them? I what I did um, was number one is I had to gather the necessary information that I'll need. Um, some of which is out there and is public. Some of which will be a surprise. Ooh. But then. I also felt, although I hadn't played serious since 2010, even before that, I felt the need to have to go back and repeat this. Two things. Number one, friends and family and my son, who, who said, no, you're going to do this. And I said, I ain't going to do this. And he said, no. He says, we're going to set up a stream and we're going to do Twitch here. And he was home for the summer because he was told to stay home because of COVID. So he set up the Twitch. And he started playing. And I mean, it's my son. He's home. He's home from college. And I don't know. I like spending time with him. He's having fun. So, I, okay. So I went over and I started playing. I started playing and it came back to me quickly. And it was a million points, a million points. It was great. And uh, so, okay. So then we started playing more. Well, so then I, I matched the old scores. Okay. And then coincidentally, since you mentioned it, I get a, another text message. I don't know. Maybe you should read, <laughs> read that one too. Today is the anniversary of where I got a, a million ninety two. Um, so not only have I repeated the scores, but I've surpassed the scores. Um, not only did I redo um, the perfect Pac Man score, but I've repeated it many times. Right. Um, one of my friends counted the different scores that were in question. What I did was I repeated them or surpassed them like twenty two times. Mm -hmm. So the idea that I didn't get him. I couldn't get him. He must have cheated. He's not good enough to get him. Pardon, bullshit. Pardon my take. Yeah, you know. yeah. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm. So, so you it, have you have you have the truth on your side. Yeah. W one of the really fun things that I did though, and sincerely was when I did the perfect score was that fun spot. Uh, fun spot was owned by Bob Lawton, the Lawton family, and at the time that I did it in 1999. Now it's 2019. I had always planned on going back and repeating it. So I went to visit him a couple of months ahead of time. And I hadn't seen him in more than 10 years, 15 years. And he welcomed me, he said hello, and we talked. And 
I said, you know, I did the perfect score here. He said, that that's the arcade that's in the movie. Yeah. He said, that's my most favorite thing that has been done here. You did it. You beat Pac-Man. I can do his voice. You did it and you did it here. And I says, what do you think if I come back on the 4th of July weekend and uh, I did it again? Mm -hmm. And he gave me that look that the old man with the glasses where he goes, <laughs> Billy, you think you can just walk in here and do a perfect score, do you? I said, yeah, who do you think you're talking to? So I went back on the 4th of July weekend and I honored him with, a, with an award for his participation contribution to the hobby. And then yes, that weekend I, I did a perfect score on demand, so to Wait, speak. Wait, the award was given to him for witnessing you, your greatness. Well, no, that sounds good, but it was <laughs> for the fact of Fun Spot, what he's created, how he's embraced Got the it. industry. What Got was it? In was competitive it just like, gaming. It was your award, though, that you created. It was like the Billy Mitchell Award honoring right. commitment to video games. Well, yeah, it was actually from, uh, it was presented by me, but it was on behalf of Walter Day, and it will eventually make its way into Guinness. Love it. Okay. Very cool. I think. I like the idea, though, of you just going to places and handing out awards. Well, again, since 2010, my favorite thing to do is to go and present and honor and advocate for gamers like an right. ambassador. Because think about competitive gamers, what they do, what they create, what they give to the hobby of gaming. They don't get any recognition and they deserve it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, especially it's the same argument that, you know, baseball players don't get what they get and the owner gets to keep it all. I guess that's not true anymore, but a long time ago, that was the argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, back in the 80s, 90s, you know, outside of the insular world of the hardcore gamers, there were no gaming celebrities. Correct. And now they're on TV. They're on like ESPN, ESPN2. Right. Um, right. How much credit do you take for the like, the acceptance of mainstream gaming as being, you know, a sport of itself. Well, if we go back again to the 80s where I was, occasionally I would go somewhere and if someone who's a hardcore gamer who has magazines, they would see me and recognize me. That was very rare. At an event, they would recognize me and other players too. Um, but it was 1999, it was the perfect score. It was the trip to Japan the story that ran around the world. That's what put m me and classic competitive gaming and recognition on the map. Yeah. Yes, I take credit for that. Well, how I, I take credit for having that good fortune fall my way because had I done that score, it was, remember it was me versus the Canadian mm -hmm. and we were in a, a hustle or a hurry to do a perfect score, which he did shortly afterwards. Um, if anything went wrong that weekend, if a bomb went off, if there was a threat or something big, that story would not have run on the wire and gotten the attention it did. But all of that energy focused into one time, one place at just the right time for it to explode around the world. I don't want to say that was luck because I like to think it was skill, but yeah, you make your it, own luck. Yeah. Face it, it was luck. Yeah. Well, how would you do in today's uh, e-gaming? Like, it, have you thought about that? If you were... 20 years old right now, 20 year old Billy Mitchell in 2022, would you be pro in a lot of these games, Call of Duty, Halo, whatever it may be? Wow. You ask a question that no one has ever asked before. I'm not being funny. Here's the question I get. Uh oh. Okay. You're about to mock me. How no, I'm not. It's going to suck for me. How come you don't play modern games? Why don't you do that? I'm about playing Call of Duty. If I put. 16 hours a day in like the old days. Um, if it would be my total focus, I wouldn't have a business. I wouldn't have a wife. I wouldn't have kids. Trust me, there's guys that kind of do that and don't have any of those. I would lose everything that I worked so hard to build. Right. And so the answer is no, I have no desire to do that for the reasons I just told you. And I have no desire to do it because I'm not going to sit there and play games that my kid can whip my ass at. Wait, but I, I, but, I know you're but, not going to no, do it. No, but, but you asked it yeah, differently. You yes. said go back and you're 20 years old today. Correct. No, I could absolutely embrace that. Um, again, I always had a good balance. I worked games, but I worked career and business. So I'm just going to assume that I could do that on a modern platform. No one, I've been asked the question a thousand times the way I said it. This is the first time wow. I've ever been asked it the way you said it. So 
I have to give a different answer that- Great question. Thank yeah, you. I, I don't know why I wouldn't, and I don't know why I couldn't. I have a determination within me that I believe whatever I did, brace yourself. Mm. I believe whatever I did, I would be the best at just because Facts. I obsessively want to be the best. You know, and you only have one life. I mean, I wanted to be, at one point in my life thinking I wanted to be, you know, um, a Navy pilot. I mean, I would have been the best Same. because I would have been so obsessed with it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wanted to be, you know, a, a crime fighter. I mean, I'd put every bad guy in jail because yeah. I'd be the best. Yep. Um, I just, I mean, if I was bussing tables, I'd do it better than anyone because I'd be obsessed with the idea of how do I make it better? How do I make it better? I walked on this show to do an interview. Most guys lean back on the couch and answer Not questions. You. No, I gotta, I gotta bring all this stuff. I have to raise the bar. Usually it comes to my advantage. Now, you're, me, you're one of the most competitive yeah. guests that we've had yeah. in terms of your presence. It's like you, I would actually say Jerry, Jerry O'Connell is wait, also a very- Who the hell like, is Jerry O'Connell? Well, get him here. Yeah, yeah wait, no, he'll, he'll duke it in. out with you. I got a question though, because of your desire, and I think you are very different than most people because you want to be the best and you would be the best in everything. If we could safely clone Billy Mitchell, how many of the world's problems would be solved? Probably only one. I wouldn't have to do it. Somebody else could. But <laughs> mm -hmm. no. no, but again, I, I have to be open to the fact that um, I see things differently. And what I mean is, you know, recently I was at a convention. I thought, yay, I did it. And then I realized, oh, wait, I came up short. Damn it. And so how, next time, how do I keep that from happening or missing the mark or misunderstanding or so every time I do something, I'm reflecting back as to what it is I can do different to avoid the mishap. That's the way people say, how did you get good at this game? When you play a game and you die, you say, oh, damn it. I say, what happened? I go back X amount of steps <clears throat> right there. So it's, in some ways it's a gift, in some ways it's a curse. Mm -hmm. Do you, um? Do you find that you enjoy video games because of the joy that it brings you? Or is it more simply like you like the winning aspect and you like the high score increasing? You like comparing yourself to others being like, look, this is what I did. This is what you did. I'm the best at this game. Or is it like, do you still actually enjoy, you know, not to use the, you know, a, a term art, but you know, the, uh, do you enjoy the beauty of the game still? I don't know anything about the enjoyment. Uh, it's the competitive aspect. It's man versus machine. I guess it is man versus man with other players, but it's really man versus machine. And I say that because I really enjoy and get mesmerized at looking and watching somebody who's really good at a game because I can appreciate that. I can appreciate what, what went into it. Um, and that doesn't just come with gaming. Uh, examples I use... Um, you know, having met Michael Jordan, um, having met, uh, you know, uh, Tony Hawk, mm -hmm. um, well, not Michael Jackson, but one, one of his guys and interacting with them and understanding the steps they took, the sacrifices they made. You could take any one of those guys and you could pick on them different oddities in their personalities. Um, but what they did, they did better than anyone in the world. So what is it that's in them that brought them to that point? And how do they apply that to the other aspects of their life? Um, that's really cool. Yeah, so I mean, many would say Michael Jordan is the Billy Mitchell of basketball. Mm. When you met him, Bless you, did he, was he aware of you? Um, yeah, I was. when I was introduced to him, I was introduced to him as to who I am mm -hmm. and he said hello and we talked about gaming for a short bit. Obviously I know about him as, as well as you do, which is yeah. beyond the pale. Um, but again, I, I'm reflecting back on the energy that was exchanged. Really it was me taking energy from him and his knowledge and what put him to the point. How many times other people wanted to go A, B, C, and D and he said, no, I'll stay here and focused on this, mm -hmm. the sacrifices he made, um, the places he didn't go because he wanted to apply himself. 
the things he could have done, but he didn't. He goes because he wanted to apply himself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are things that are lost and things that are gained. Um, there's people who would look at him. There's people who would look at um, me or you or anybody and say, I wouldn't do that. Oh, it wasn't worth it. Oh, he didn't get to do this. He didn't get to do that. Um, you never have that feeling or energy or understanding until that moment when you make the decision. Yeah. Um, so I had one more question, and then I, we want to do a Mount Rushmore with you. I think someone told you that, correct? Someone told you that we're going to do the Mount Rushmore of arcade games? Uh, maybe. Sh should be easy <clears throat> when for I, you. When I go on an interview, I never say what's it about or what do you want to talk about or what can we or cannot. People do an interview, they go, oh, I'll send you the questions ahead of time. No, you don't do that. Yeah. Let her rip. Yeah, let it rip. I like it. All right. So my last question before we do the Mount Rushmore, it's the rowback question. Go to R H O B A C K. Use code uh take for twenty percent off your first purchase. Roback.com. Q zips, hoodies, polos, everything. R H O B A C K dot com. Use code take for twenty percent off your first purchase. The hot sauce element of this. I just love the fact that you are Billy Mitchell. Uh, one of the greatest video game players of all time, one of the greatest villains of all time, lover of America, uh, alpha, tenacious, all these things, and then also hot sauce mogul. How can you explain that to me? Um, Ricky's right. Yeah, let's go back to 1978. We weren't the first, but we were almost the first one in Florida who was serving wings. And uh, it's funny the guy who was the manager of the anchor bar in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah he, we know it. Yeah, he happened to be a bartender for my dad. That had no influence whatsoever. But um, Wings went on the menu in 1978 and we just couldn't find a sauce that we thought was good enough. And in 1980, we reached out to a guy who was a president of a hot sauce company and he said, I'll show you how to make a hot sauce better than any hot sauce in the world. Um, that This is the real truth, not the... Billy did everything truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he did. He was awesome. He was a great old guy who's long gone. And through him, I, I met and had other relationships with other people going all the way back then, some that survived today, speaking specifically of Johnny. And through the years, things have been critiqued, but it was always the obsession, again, that we could make or create something better than anyone else. So sometime in the mid eighties when I realized I couldn't just play video games forever, even though maybe I wanted to, I had to take the obsessive nature I had and I had to focus it towards something positive. So I focus it towards something positive, which is the family business. And that's when we get, we began playing with hot sauce. Uh, chicken wings were our main item. And then as it was successful, people wanted to have it or buy it or sell it in different markets and, different stores and things like that. So I had the experience of messing with the hot sauce formula, the experience of applying it like chicken wings and such, and the experience of marketing it. So when you take all of the aspects together, once again, yes, I know more about this than anyone in the world. Yeah, can I see Do I know more about making it than anybody? No, that would be my friend. Eh, his name's John. Okay, do I know more about wings? Probably not. I probably know more about eating it. But marketing, I'm sure not. But collectively, I've become so obsessed that I do. You're number one. What are you... Uh, I try a little of it? What are you obsessed with now? Well, I have three kids, all that graduated from college. Uh, boy, you asked this personal question. I'm on a roll, and you got to ask something personal yeah. like this. I'm curious. But you'll probably nail it. Because you, okay. you said that you go from okay. obsession to obsession. Yeah. So there's okay. got to be one right now. Okay. Well, I've had the good fortune. Uh, my wife is a teacher of 32 years. Okay. When I met her, she had, uh, oh, by the way, she's from Long Island. When I met her, she had two masters. Okay. Now she has a doctorate, an EDD. Okay. We raised three kids that they all went to college. Um, they all graduated. Um, my oldest daughter, Florida State. My younger daughter is beginning her third year of law school and my son is a graduate of West Point. Um, you're, what am I obsessed with? I've been obsessed with that for quite a while now. My youngest is 23. And 
quite honestly, I'm searching for a new obsession or to expound on some of the obsessions. Don't do sports podcasting. I want. I would no, like to stay if I do, one. I'd end up. I'd, I'd end like up, to say number one. No, plus I'd end up looking like uh, like us. Well, yeah. no, never mind. Yeah. Go, go but to you would question. dominate <laughs> us. I'm. I'm asking you, please step down on okay. that. Step down before I step up. Yeah, exactly. All right. So with the hot sauce, love hot sauce. Okay. We love hot sauce. Let me. Jake loves hot sauce too. Actually, mm -hmm. let me try to be honest here. Okay. When you sit here and you say to yourself, "Gee, you're going to make a hot sauce better than the ones on the market," uh, I believe you. The one on the market, the over dominant, over dominant. It's not even close. If they stopped making hot sauce, everyone else who does make hot sauce went on 24 hour production. You couldn't keep up with the production. The over dominant one is Frank's. Yep, Frank's Red, Red hot. hot. Yep. And this is Frank's territory here. Yeah. So the idea was to take a sauce that, like Frank's, make it a little thicker, a little less salt, da 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 da, da made out of cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Oh, pardon, pardon my take. take. Hot sauce. Wow, can and, we try some? And wow, and you got some for you guys, and you got some for your audience. Man, you guys are gonna be doing some nice. mail stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, put sample a little it. Water. Pass it around, cannonball. But like, what about, don't you have like another hot sauce in the house so you could do a side by side? Yeah. You got like the T word? Tabasco? Shh, no, I come on. Sorry, when I no came on ads, here, they no said no ads. foul language. No, no free hats. Tapatio. Okay. Then, see, in some ways it was easy. When you take the, when you take the sauce, Cayenne, you make a different sauce. You simply substitute a pepper. Yeah. Habanero. Ooh. That's hot. Oh, Billy. That's, that's a hot stuff. Billy. Yeah, that'll, put, that'll put hair on your head. That's what happened Billy, to me. Billy, I'm being honest. <laughs> this is the best hot sauce I've ever had. So Man dominates everything in life. So this one has, again, this is the one for the competition oh, with good. all the podcasters. And um, so there's extra of these, too. You're a big <clears throat> thumbs up guy, too, which I love. In almost every picture that I see of you. There it is. It's good to have it's a thing. A, it's a powerful thumbs up too. I've always wondered like what to do with my hands in a picture. It's you've got your thing and it's awesome. Well, it's kind of funny. I I find myself I'm taking a personal picture at a graduation. I do that. I go, oh geez, I, I don't need to do that. <laughs> but I was uh, I was recently at a play, uh, a musical, King of Kong. Oh my God! This put is on good. by uh, oh well that's habanero. So you're moving up. This is great. Ooh yeah, King of Kong a musical in Indianapolis. Come up and the guy play. who was playing me. I had to pull him aside. He's a nice guy named Luke. And I said to the lady, Casey, I go, come here, we gotta have a talk with Luke. Cause Luke's going on camera doing this. Oh no. Mm -hmm. I go, come on, it's a snap. It's a snap. <laughs> Boom. You gotta, yeah, you enforce it. Yeah, and he had it there. And then <laughs> I met um, I met a lady named Dolly who worked on the Donald Trump campaign. And she says, I notice you give thumbs up like Donald Trump. I go, no, he gives thumbs up because I do. Yes, yeah. that's but I right. Said, I said, you when you see it. him, you got to talk to him because he's doing this. No, it's up in the face it's here. Right. Yeah. You think so. if he had a better thumbs up, he would have gotten reelected? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a fair It wouldn't have hurt. Fair question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't have hurt. So uh, I think in New York, no. Yeah. In uh, Texas, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also, boy, it's so bad for me to say this. Uh-oh. But through my life, it didn't matter who was president. I either forced my way or I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You control so, your own destiny. Yeah. So that's alpha mentality. Who's right or wrong? I don't know. Um, uh, maybe it's all wrong. Yeah. Maybe so, it's all right. Maybe who you're knows? the you yeah. only right one out there. Yeah. All right. So no, the only left one out there. <laughs> but um, so we're gonna have the contest. And so one of these six teams is gonna win. Yeah. Is it gonna be yours? I'm not on. I was not asked to be in the contest. Um, so you didn't even make the qualifications. Very, yeah, it was very mean. I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm teamed up with Billy, another Billy. Me? I don't know Billy. how that happened. So probably I not. not. I was excluded. My guess is that okay. uh, is that he's probably too hungover to win anything. Let's assume you win, or whoever does win. Mm -hmm. Just like baseball has their trading cards, so does football. Probably baseball is the most popular one. Well, now, video games have their trading cards. Mm. Oh, incredible. And so. Matter of fact. Oh, that's Walter on the cover. I have some. Oh, yeah. He's kind of recognizable. He is. Mm -hmm. I, I love how the referees wear referee jerseys right. in gaming. Mm -hmm. It's a nice touch. But what they did was there's many thousands of cards out now for anybody who has participated or had any impact or um, 
<clears throat> made their mark in the arcade gaming world. Again, game producers, um, developers, players, event holders, um, people who do first. As far as a company like this doing a event like this, the first I know of. So whoever wins, we'll be back in a month or two or three or whenever you say fit, and we'll present them with their own trading card. Oh, wow. Great. And their own trading card, you know, will be in there. It'll it'll eventually be like one of these here. Wow. Beautiful. That's so, awesome. So one of you guys is going to go on the map. Yeah. And Can't one wait. of you guys definitely is not because you're not even in the competition. I was not asked. It's I don't know where the exclusion happened. But I do. It definitely it, happened at some point. It went by qualifications. Yeah. I, so mean, I have no so idea. So there's, there's 12 of them. And then there's everyone else. I'll get to the bottom of who excluded me. And me? I would say this is my first <laughs> step into the sports world with hot sauce. Mm -hmm. But I was I had the good fortune of going to high school with a guy who was the son of a famous guy who made his mark in the gaming world. Uh, that guy went on to break every record, quarterback record at Alabama. He was a he, he was truly a great guy, a nice guy. And his dad was great. And I, my claim to fame in the football world is the first touchdown pass he ever threw, he threw to me. Who's that? And Joe Namath? It was Mike Shula, son, ah, of, son of Don Shula. Crazy. So Shula has their steakhouse, their Shula yeah, burgers. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I, I do that one. Okay. Again, it's their own proprietary formula. It's a great one. All right, I'll and, try uh, that as well. Oh um, let, yeah, let's do this Mount Rushmore. Man, if, if that had like a, a proof or an alcohol content, you'd be schnookered by now. Mm. Seriously. This is really good stuff, though. The the part of my take, cayenne sauce. All right, so let's do the Mount Rushmore. Ready? So it's the Mount Rushmore of arcade games. Okay, I almost know what we're doing, but let her rip. All right, so you want to go first? So you, you know how, obviously, it's four picks each. We're going to do a snake draft. It's you, it's me and PFT combined, and then it's these three guys combined. So it's three three teams picking. Do you? Would you like to start? Okay, so I would pick a game. You'd pick you, yeah, you because I, I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, I'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, pick well, a game. You're f the best I was, game. Well, no, I was on stage at the Tokyo Game Show, and uh, that was awesome. That was the player of the century. Uh, but what was also announced there was the game of the century. So, what was the game of the century announced on the Tokyo Game Show in 1999? And that would be the one that I would have to choose. What game was it? Pac-Man. Go ahead. ahead Pac-Man. Pac-Man, number one. Pac-Man, and Pac-Man was also the first game inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame. 1-1. One, one. Great pick. Great pick. All right, go ahead, Hank. You go. Yeah, that's you. That's you. Why are you looking at me? No, I'm, I'm just curious. What are you, Googling? We're curious about what? He's Googling video games. Uh, we're going to go with Golden T. Okay. Okay. Interesting choice. Blah. Oh, Billy says, blah. No, just no. for me, it's a blah. It'll okay. You. Are you yucking his yum? Blah. Blah. See, I think... I, I, th I think his choice needs some hot sauce. <laughs> I think it's a perfectly <laughs> fine choice. Probably could have no. gotten in the third round. Yeah. No, no good what, choice. What's actually good about that is Golden Tea, over the years, they change it. They update the courses. It's on and on. So in that respect, it is a good choice. Nice. You made him feel better. All right. Our first pick. I usually don't do that. Um, I'll, I'll Thanks, go and then you go. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna take off the top. Yep. NBA Jam. One of my favorite video games of all time. Arcade NBA, NBA Jam. Billy's looking at me like, what are you talking about? How, you didn't play NBA Jam? No. Well, because I it, never played Pac-Man. Because NBA Jam came after the golden age of video games. So when did the that golden came age to a end? close in 1986. The reasons why it came to a close in 1986, two reasons that I speak of. One is, after that is when video games took a hard turn, some of them, towards violence, not NBA Jam. Right. And the other one was, in the competitive world, every game every game after that year, you'd play a game, you'd get a score, oh, put another quarter in and continue, and continue, and continue. I see you and you say, oh, I got the high score yesterday. I'd say, yeah, what did it cost you? It wasn't one play, one start. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, pay to win. But let's go back to... Uh, it's like video games now. Um, the guys from Midway, uh, Tim in particular, mm -hmm. recently at the Bloomington um, Con, uh, we gave 
geez, I wish I had one. I would have known. Um, he got an award again for his contribution, what he did, what he helped create. Uh, and I throw in mouse pads and sauce and all that stuff just to be fun. But no, the idea of you mentioned NBA Jam and just recently, geez, two weeks ago, um, they were honored at a convention. Yeah. No, so, did you honor them? Game. Was yeah. that the Billy Mitchell Award for Excellence in Video Games? Well, yes, it wasn't from me, but I did present, I did speak of. Yeah. Uh, but again, more often than not, it's somebody like Walter doing that. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, so that's second, our first pick. You know what? I think I'm going to go with um, with the last one. Yes. On the list. <laughs> love it. This is maybe my favorite game of all time Big Buck Hunter. Mm hmm. Fucking love Big Buck Hunter. Absolutely. You, you put me in a bar with a stack of ones. And I will be glued to the big buck hunter screen. Double buck bonus, the triple best. buck bonus. I, I sometimes think, I, I shoot the there's female a deer next by to a big buck hunter. People are going for the golden team. Bullshit. No. Maybe maybe an idiot like no you. No way. You just don't have that killer instinct, Hank. That's Billy, okay. what, what, which one of those games is better? You think? I think we should go to the next. Go on to the next <laughs> choice. Okay. All right, Hank. Go ahead. <sighs> Street oh. Fighter. Ah, that's a good, good choice. Pick. We that's had good that pick. Too. That's a good pick. We had it as well. Billy's looking at us like we're crazy because Donkey Kong lasted all the way to him coming no, wrapping it, around. Uh, you would have to. You would have to put a fighting game in. Yes, and you'd be hard pressed to pick one before it, Street Fighter. It's also yep. personal, you know. Yeah. I, Donkey Kong is the greatest game of all time. You know the reason Billy's here, but I didn't play it that much. So and, I, and none, yeah, none, none of my team did yeah, either. Right, right yeah. but be honest, you didn't play it that much because it was so damn hard. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're yeah. a beta. Uh, it's your pick, Billy. You got two. Okay. See, what's going to happen here is you guys are setting me up for the fall. No. Yeah, you are. Just so you know in the audience, if I don't pick Donkey Kong, it's going to go without being picked. So, yeah. Donkey Kong. It's probably the only game, classic game, that has tournaments, usually on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. So, how would you not choose that? And again... The Kong off is in Australia in Brisbane, uh, July sixteen and seventeen. Yeah. So. Will you be there? No. Ah. I should say yes so that I can let him sweat it out again. Now, yeah, is, you should. You should get him all scared. How many so. steps ahead of your competition are you at all times? Because you do always have a plan. <laughs> I, I imagine you show up places a lot of times unexpectedly, already ready to put Billy Mitchell out there. Yeah, I I actually have two very strong things planned that uh that they don't know about mm. so you're correct they uh, being your haters no they being um I, to be honest i don't even think about those guys yeah but they meaning uh the general public or the people who follow it uh -huh. mm. because the element of surprise is always awesome you yes. spend a lot of time like planning your schemes which i respect a lot of people just do schemes half-assed you're you're very meticulous well like for example, there's other people, other players who could, um, whether you want to call it randomly or the way that I send something to Dave, they could do something. They could make an effort. They could plan. They could conjugate something in their mind. They could, they could send something that would catch attention. They would say that they're going to be in an area. They could prepare themselves for the opportunity. Look, Look up luck in the dictionary. It would likely say when preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I try to always be prepared for that opportunity. So when people say, you know, you got lucky. Well, yeah, I did. I prepared for it. Yep. Right. If you're not prepared, you'll never do it. One of my lines is, you'll never get lucky. You'll never win if you're not there when they spin the wheel. Mm. You have to be there. The harder you work, the luckier like you that. get. Right. Like Again, when people say, why you? Why did you get this attention? Why did you, you know, receive this interview, this award, um, this victory? What separated me from other players from that original, say, Life, Life magazine photo, the first esports event? Um, a friend of mine, Ben. Ben would sometimes show up somewhere and sometimes he wouldn't. Ben couldn't get as lucky as me in the aspect of gaming. He's had a great life but in the aspect of gaming, because he wasn't there when the wheel went round. I was always there, always, mm -hmm. always, always. I, for the most part, never missed anything. Therefore, I had the opportunity to get lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have another pick. 
Me? Yeah. Yep, you go twice now, and then he comes back around. So we did Donkey Kong. Yeah. yeah. You got Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. Good, strong board so far for you. Wow. It'd be uh, um, a great game and not one that I stuck on. But again, I'm going to stick with the classic age. Um, only because it was it was expected to outperform or upend Pac-Man um, was Defender. Mm. Okay. And uh, Defender's a great game and many games followed after Defender, but Defender set the stage for them. Um, many people would... I've, I actually don't recall if that was the next game introduced into the Video Game Hall of Fame. Hmm. But if it wasn't, it was one after that. But yeah, definitely Defender. Okay, good pick. Hank? Dan? Henry? Eric? I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to oh. fucking kill you. No, not that one. <laughs> Papa <that> Shot. <laughs> I'm going to go with Papa Shot. Papa Shot? Good, good call. Good do, you ever, do, you ever, do you ever fuck with that, Billy? Like, ski ball, Papa Shot? Nothing? Nah? He's looking at me like I'm a psycho. I love Papa Shot. About, Papa Shot? I love yeah, Papa yeah. Shot. Papa Shot? You never Papa do that shot. just to like kill some time if you're well, in the arcade? Yeah, that's fine, but that doesn't belong in the same category as what we're talking well, about. Well, it's in an arcade. arcade. It's in the arcade. Okay, it's also in the U.S. I mean, what do you want me to do tell they, you? Yeah. Do they have one at um, at uh, Fun Spot? They have everything at Fun Spot. Ah, there yeah, we so go. There, you've referred to Fun Spot yeah. as being the Augusta of of arcades, and they they, have it. they've got a Papa Shot. They've got there. it. Okay, so now I have to go practice Papa Shot, mm -hmm. come back here next time, so I can you, so I can put ass whipping. You just yeah. don't like it because you're not good at, good at it. Pop yeah. That's your thing. I'll beat you. Like you're you're you hate things that you aren't competitive at. Hmm. I'll fuck you up in Papa Shot, Billy. All right. Uh, pardon my take. I'll take that challenge. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> Done. Let's set it up. Um. All right. My pick. Our pick. Who? Cruising USA. Wait, whose pick? Well, I was gonna do the next pick. It's we've already discussed our entire thing. Yeah, Hank, quit trying Cruising to drive USA. a wedge between us. We discussed. No, this I'm just curious. Time. I forget sometimes we say team and because it's my pick. So well, it's because like, we is it your have pick discussed. or are you guys God, together? you're gonna do this every time no, we do my last one. I, I forgot. I forgot. All right. Cruising USA. Is that the, the bike game? No, no it's the car it's game. It's the car it's game. Incredible. It's a legendary car game. You sit in the cockpit of the car. I guess it's got a driver's seat. I've been playing too much flight sim recently. It's so awesome. But um, yeah, you've got the pedals right there. You steer. Great graphics. You drive through across America. You can run over crowds on the it side. It was the first like, uh, car game that I remember where you could sit in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a f Billy can fact check me, but the, I don't remember. Like I remember as a kid seeing Cruise in USA for the first time, being like, "Holy shit, this rules!" I think Billy doesn't like it because it's it's like too gimmicky. You have to sit in the thing. It's not a joystick and the mm. buttons and a screen. They've introduced too well, much technology. Well, it's funny you mention that. Like today's game, I watch my son play, and he's always using at least nine fingers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like what happened to the joystick and the button or steering wheel? But you're correct. But let's go to your point. It's not that I don't like that because that is a good choice. But thank you. But what came? What was the preempt for cruising USA? Let's just say it was Outrun. What was it for Outrun? Probably pole position. You know, we're back to 1981 now. Yeah. Uh, before pole position, huh, turbo. Yeah, both pole position and turbo. You could sit in as well. Uh, <sighs> not the moving graphics like you're talking about. But again, always trying to show appreciation going back to where things began. Yeah, you yeah. respect the greats. Yeah, yeah standing yeah. on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason you can see so I like far. That. I okay. like that, too. Our last pick? Uh, for our last one, You scumbag see. Hank. So we, I want to do a fighting game, too, but you know what? I'm just going to do air hockey. Mm, great one. Air hockey is a great arcade game. Great one. It is. It's an arcade Billy, game, Billy. Billy's giving You're us looking nothing. at me like it's not an arcade game. Well, you know me. I always got a story. Yeah. yeah, so you're probably okay. a great. You're probably the world's best air hockey player. You just don't tell anybody about it. No, but when I had to be, I was. I was at. Facts. I, I was in Orlando. I was at the King of Kong Arcade that we had in the Orlando airport for a few years, till the leash ran out. And one of the guys that came there, maybe you guys know him. One of the guys came there, wanted to film me, and he is without a doubt before today. He's one of my most favorite guys because. Believe it or not, in the world of Hollywood, 
he was 100% honest. <laughs> that doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said exactly what he wanted to do and he stuck to it and he never tried to smoke anything different. And he went there. We had fun. I had fun toying with him. I mean, I'm in an arcade. I mean, I'm in my turf. And we finished it off with a game of air hockey. And I'm just playing and laughing. And he went way ahead of me. And then I thought, okay, let's get serious. And so it was like six to three or something. And then boom, boom, boom. It was six to six. And then boom, I hit it in seven, six. So I thought, well, he's going to leave that part out. No, he put it right in the film he did. Love it. It's great. But the guy was a, a really good guy. And uh, I actually sent him a message that I was here because I never know when he's in New York and everybody comes to New York at one time or another. Yep. So who was that guy? Vince Vaughn. Michael Bay. Bill Belichick. Uh, Steven Spielberg. Morgan Spurlock. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I haven't heard back from him. Is that the guy who ate all the cheeseburgers? Yeah. Yeah. But no, he 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 was terrific, and he's somebody. Uh, the impression he gave on me—I <laughs> don't want to give the wrong impression here—but the impression he gave me, if he came up to me and said, "Bill, we're going to film, we're going to do this, that, this, and that. You'll get this, that, this, and this," I'd say, "Okay." He'd say, "If he said to me, okay, I'll have it put into a, a contract for you.' No, no, no. Your word's good enough. Yeah. You know how dangerous that is in Hollywood. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Very. he's he's a guy that fits that. He was, I he was that classy of a guy. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. Hank, your team's last pick. Our final pick, uh, I mean, probably on the Mount Rushmore itself, all-time great arcade games. Can't believe I'm getting this in the fourth round. Oh. We're getting this in the fourth round. Yeah. Pinball. Oh, you're getting it in the fourth We're round. Yeah, no, I... Okay. I, Pinball? You... That's like saying electronic game. Can't you be a little more specific? Pinball? Yeah, pin, pinball is a, it's a wide variety of pinball games you can play. Kiss? There was a place in California Star that had Wars. 700 different pinballs. Not anymore. The, hey, one I, the one I played in the bowling alley growing up was an ACDC <laughs> pinball, I believe. I don't, okay. know. I, don't know. I don't know if that changes anything. Because like what you picked right there was like saying, oh, I'm going to choose Xbox. No. For my game. It's the same format, is it not? No, it's wildly different. It's like what are some other ones then, PFT? Kiss? Mm -hmm. Star Wars? What's the difference between Kiss AC and Star DC? Wars? Yeah, there's a Beatles. There's a Beatles one. That we all know. But, like, what's the difference between those games? Different layout, different. Yeah, the layout's format, different. The different format's ramps, different. Different bumpers. And the bumpers. I don't um, think you know anything about pinball, Hank. Mm -mm. How about if mm -mm. you narrow it down? I mean, like, there was Gottlieb and Williams and Stern, and so you could say, like, Stern pinballs were the greatest. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did give a plug right there. Wow. You're a Stern boy? Yeah. Yeah. And, okay, well, and, I'll let you. I'll let it. And I'm it's not only it because. Cause... It's not only because. Stern makes great pinballs, but mm -hmm. Gary Stern's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll let it stand, though. But you have just got schooled by Billy and Pinball. Yeah. Okay, Billy, your last Billy, pick. But, but not, your favorite was ACDC? Yeah, that's the one I played. I'll look up who the manufacturer <laughs> is of that real quick. All right, Billy, your last pick, because I know you got to you got to start filming something. Um, The last pick, again, I'm trying to pick games that had an impact. Right. Um, games that are still popular today. Right. Uh, a game, geez, there's too many to say. I mean, I want to say Space Invaders, but I won't. Wow. I want to say Frogger, but I certainly won't. Whoa. Oh, Battle Frogs. You ever beat Battle Frogs? Never Battle played. Toads? Battle Sorry. Toads was impossible. It's impossible. Literally the hardest game ever. Battle Toads. Okay. So, but the game I would pick especially for all the gamers that are looking. I mean, I, although it wasn't something I played heavily, I, it would have to be Galaga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now if, I always hear people talk about Galaga. I've never right. played it myself. But if I play Galaga, the precursor to Galaga is Galaxian. But I'll stick with Galaga. Okay, so no Space Invaders. Oh, Galaga was fun. It was one of the games that absolutely, Space Invaders, that launched games. It was 1978. But... It doesn't have the staying power of Galaga. Okay. I like Galaga. Okay. Well, Billy, this has been incredible. We appreciate you coming on. I think people are going to really enjoy this. Um, you are a legend. You know that. You're a living legend. And uh, anytime you want to come back on, we'd love to have you. Well, uh, since you guys are so competitive in the sports world, and this is esports, yes, it is 
a skill. Yes, it is athletes. Mm -hmm. Yes, these people do deserve the recognition and advocation that we try to give. Uh, I was saying last night that if something is done competitively, a world championship on this or that or this, I can't think of a better place than Barstool to do that because it's like you already have the infrastructure for that. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, take somebody that we spoke well of like Morgan Spurlock. No, he doesn't have, it would take a lot of work for him to prepare what it is you already have prepared to do it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've had that pondering in my mind all night like, wow, you're in New York. Is there someplace better? Uh, yeah. Gee, you guys have the right nature, but you have the right attitude. Is it competitive? Yeah. But is it fun? Yeah. Is it something you should take seriously to your grave? No, that's coming from me. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm, I'll throw some ideas at you for the future. All right. Well, let's do the tournament. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. We appreciate it. Billy Mitchell is brought to you guys by our great friends over at Truebill. How many subscription services are you paying for each month? Do you even know? I didn't know. I used Truebill and I found out. Turns out there were a bunch that I was paying for I did not use and Truebill saved me a lot of money. Truebill is the smartest way to manage your finances. Truebill helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. And you can cancel subscriptions directly through the app. True story, I use Truebill. Turns out that like over the last three years, I've started a lot of diets that I didn't stick to. And I downloaded a bunch of apps for these diets, like counting my macros and checking out what exercise I should be doing. Hadn't used them probably in years. Truebill saved me hundreds of dollars just by canceling the old diet apps that I don't use. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. It's got a variety of tools to help customers improve their finances. You can create a monthly budget and expenses. You can track and evaluate your savings goals. They have automated savings. You choose how much to put away weekly. Get push notifications when you're getting close to going over your budget or when your cash is running low. I use Truebill. It saved me money. You'll love it too. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash take. Go right now. That's Truebill.com slash take. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash take. Okay, let's wrap up with Guys on Chicks. Reminder, Friday's episode, very special Dungeons and Dragons where we did our own uh, journey game all contained within one episode. So if you haven't listened to the past Dungeons and Dragons because you're like, oh, I, I'm not caught up. You don't have to worry. We started fresh with Nick and Tim Woods, and it was plot twist galore. Game of Thrones is like, damn, if our if our last season was anything like this, we would have had people just going crazy for it. Agreed? Facts. Fact. Yes. It was, it was, I think it was our, be our best campaign yet. Agreed. Agreed. Nick and was, a lot of yeah. twists. Yeah, Nick was incredible. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do a couple guys on chicks. Stella Cam real quick. We got Stella Cam. She's been whining. Hey, Stella's, Stella's, Stella's uh, doing the dumb dog thing where she's seen a deer every day and been like, today's the day I'm going to catch a deer. Get it, Stella. No, <laughs> no. <believe> in you. <laughs> no, no it's I like know. like Hank with the fish. <laughs> I know. It's not happening. It's not happening, but she thinks she will. Uh, all right, guys on chicks. Wait, there's My a poster up in, in this room right now that says, believe in yourself, Stella. Stella, there you go. You got to get that deer. <laughs> you got it. I think I have... She, if she got to a deer, I think the deer would just kick her and it would just be over. It'd be curtains. <laughs> I don't I don't want I don't want her to get close to the deer. All right, go ahead. My boyfriend has been eating soups for lunch every day for six months because PFT told him it's soup diet season. Can you have PFT tell him it's the summer and no longer soup season, or at least that eating clam chowder every day isn't going to help him lose weight? <laughs> yeah. Um uh, yeah, you're right. The clam chowder is not the best soup to be eating for lunch every single day. It's cream based. Uh, and summertime is it. not soup. It's not soup season, but the soup diet does work. You can lose a lot of weight. If you just do soups or salads every day for lunch during the week, it works. But in the summertime, like this is why you do the soup diet. That's what he's not understanding is like summertime is meant to just get fat and gross and eat whatever you want and just treat your body like a dumpster. Um, so there's really no point in dieting over the summer. Like, what am I, what am I trying to get ready for football season winter? No, I'm going to be trying to pack on weight for those occasions. So, um, 
I'm glad that he did the soup diet, but also a major tenet of the soup diet is knowing when to stop the soup diet and then just going like ape shit on your body with everything else. So a couple of things. One, I've tried, I should write down all the diets I've tried in the past. I did try once to do uh, clam chowder and jambalaya only as a diet. <laughs> that didn't work. Um, shocker. But I was like, it's soup. It's fine. The summer diet thing. I, I find for heavier guys like myself, the summer is like already puts a diet on you because you have to wear a t-shirt. So don't think about dieting. Just You just know that like instinctively you're going to probably eat a little bit less because you have to wear a t-shirt. So that like that's the diet in itself. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a shame diet that's built into the summer. So you shouldn't have to think like, oh, I'm going to be on a diet in the summer. Just be fat, go wear a t-shirt, and then you probably won't eat a second dinner. That's how I do well, it. Also- also in the summertime, it's so hot outside. I just, I feel like just by being outdoors in the sun, like, boom, that's another 500 calories I burned today just yeah. by being, by being slightly uncomfortable for most of the day. So you don't need to continue the soup diet, although I do respect it. Hey guys, every time my boyfriend gets a boner, he will pull his pants out and say out loud, boing, <laughs> like the, like a noise a flexible door stopper makes. He laughs for at least five minutes every time he does it and thinks it's the funniest thing he's ever done. Should I be concerned or let him just ride it out? Thanks. Sounds like you got to do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Can I get rid of it? Because, yeah. It's like there's only one way to get take care of this problem. Yeah. He's just putting it out there. He's like, it's not going to go away on its own. Uh, either that or he he might still be at the age where you get recreational boners and not just like – utilitarian boners that you have like if at, at our age if you get a boner it's because like you're about to use it you know right. you don't pull it out it's like a gun you don't pull it out and not use it but when you're like between the age of 12 and i'd say 27 28 they just happen sometimes you just get like a casual like oh what oh surprise boner that's cool yeah no when you get into your mid to late 30s you have to be like all right it's time to try to get a boner <laughs> like you're like you're like clear my schedule i'm gonna try to get a boner today <laughs> <laughs> and you can't waste a boner that's the that's the other thing at this age if you have it and you waste it that's a sin if you don't use it you lose it that's no a it's, it's illegal it's illegal in many of the southern states now for a man to have an erection and to not uh use it for procreation <laughs> All right, one with this one. I, I don't know. I don't know if I believe this one. It's it's preposterous. Hey, fellows, my boyfriend and I have been dating for five years, and we just moved in together. One thing that always worries me is that he keeps all of his losing bet tickets and hangs them all over the walls in his bedroom. He says that it makes him a better gambler because the first thing he sees every day is his mistakes. <laughs> I thought that when I moved in, he would take them down, but he refuses to. How do I get him to stop being such a child? I like this. Um, I'm just thinking about like what, depressing. what what could like if I, if I laid out all my losing bets in my entire life, I think it would go around the world like seven times. Um, <laughs> You'd be a I, hoarder. I, I kind of like it just because I think every gambler's had this moment. Like I, I've had moments where I'm like, I'm going to start a spreadsheet so that I can like track what I'm losing. I used to carry around little notebooks where I'd write down every single bet. Um, yeah, you're just going to keep losing. It doesn't really matter. Like, I think you just encourage him to at least like at least he's acknowledging that he loses because that's better than than having your boyfriend be like, I never, ever lose. And but yet he loses all the time. So he's acknowledging it. So I think you just let him go with it. And so it, I guess yeah. you must live in a state that has like a sports book nearby that he goes to and, and places bets in person. I think it'd be kind of a psycho move to like print out a statement from like the app that you use. Like have to like take a screenshot, email it to yourself, print it out, and then hang it up. That would be concerning behavior. But if it's just like little momentum, also mementos, it's like it's just a memory of a fun time that you had when you were betting on a game too. This is dude. That's a guy's version of scrapbooking. I I found the little note. So little notebooks I had. It was probably like fifteen years ago. They're little pocket notebooks I'd put in my back pocket, and I'd write down all my bets before I left my house. And I would like go throughout the day. I'd have a pen and a notebook and I would do X or check. And I found them a few years ago when I was moving and it was great. It was like, oh shit, like this day didn't go so well. 
why'd you take like <laughs> every single over? Like, what are you doing? And it was just like, all, like, a, you know, like on it, just like uh, the history of my life and just a Saturday of just like 40 bets and they're all X's. It's like, that was kind of fun to go that back down. It is a trip down memory lane. Like if you pulled out a notebook from 2016 and you're like, Oh, that's the Gucci game. That's when Hank hit me with the Gucci. Yes, like you, yes. you go back and you feel all those thoughts and all those memories. And the beautiful thing about uh, even if you lose gambling, if you just wait long enough, you'll be able to look back and be like, that was fun. I truly had fun losing money on that game. Yes. And it's there are moments of my life that are uh, seminal moments that are really just around ga- like the day my son was born. I took Glenny Balls, gave me two WNBA overs in the middle of the day, both lost. I'll remember that for the rest of my life. People think I cried because my son was born. It was because I had lost those two overs. Like those mm-hmm. are just, you know, those are special moments that I can, I can someday tell my son like, Hey, the, your birth was incredible, but those two losers really fucking sucked. Every time I see TJ Watt, I'll be like, Hey, that's not Derek. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like little, it's little like bookmarks on your life that you can go back to and be like, Oh, that was kind of t- fun. Antonio Brown fucking up two of those catches back to back in the end zone <gasps> oh, on Sunday man. Night Football. Oh my, oh my god, that was a great they loss. Ran that too play soon, for him. too soon. I can't That's wait too for, soon for that season. one. God damn it, <laughs> can't wait for football season. Um, okay, all right. Let me do numbers. That's the show. Uh, we'll see everyone on Friday. Let's see. Random number generator. Forty-two. Twenty-four. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Six. What did you guess, Hank? 24. All right, here we go. Pressing it. This doesn't count, though. 64. Mm. 64. 64. Yeah, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. That's a six-timer. Maybe next week when we're back, because we're going we're gonna to be doing Zoom the last week of July, maybe we should just record a couple from the ping pong machine just for safekeeping. <laughs> we should also do – do one where Hank just has like a, maybe a live stream. Hank just has to keep playing the lotto machine over and over again until he wins. And we call it Blake we should of the do that Year. For Blake of the yeah. Year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do we put it back in or does it get easier as it goes on? No, we put it back in. You Actually, Big Cat, that, that should be how we do Blake of the Year this year. Like me and you will get together and we'll assign different lotto numbers <laughs> to different Blakes. And then Hank has to sit there picking a different number each time. I with like a full it. machine until I he gets like it, it right. And then we just decide <laughs> who's the Blake of the year. I like it. Um, okay. See everyone on Friday. Love you guys.